Welcome to game two of the finals of the 2009 College World Series. If LSU takes a win, a national champion will be crowned. But Texas has come through in even tougher spots all season long. These two programs have been frequent visitors to Omaha. For 59 years, the best in college baseball have met in America's heartland. Will this be the final game of 2009 at Rosenblatt? The gem of a park sitting high on a hill. It's another moment and another memory to savor at the old ball yard. This place, this place is just inspiring. Rich with history and tradition. A shrine. The shining light and ultimate destination for so many. And so few. You see, Omaha's not just another stopover. Not just another spot on the map. It's a link to our past and a clear path ahead. As time ticks away on this magnificent little place, it's not a time for sadness but a time for reflection. Because no matter at what location or on what hill, it's Omaha that makes the College World Series special. <laughs> year after year, as the talent level increases, so does the excitement. Fastball lined down the left field, lined into the corner, and it's fair. Two runs are going to score, and it's tied. LeMayu comes through. The keepers of Rosenblatt would be proud. Holy cow, what an at bat! The show put on Monday night was one for the ages. Breaking pitch hit the center field. LSU takes the lead. We've heard so much about the road to Omaha. Well, here it is. Last stop. It's the CWS Finals, live from the jump. Get it up right here, boy. Time to turn it on. Capital One presents ESPN's coverage of the College World Series. It's game two of the finals. If LSU wins, they will be national champions for the sixth time. If Texas wins, we have a deciding game three tomorrow night. Texas coach Augie Garrido talked with LSU coach Paul Maneri earlier today. That was a hell of a game last night, man. Uh, yeah, awesome I know, game. I know, you know, I mean, you've been through so many of them, and so have I, and I don't want to sound self... Uh, I can go either know, direction. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. I don't want to sound... But it was a great game. It was a great game. You know, I mean, you lose, you're pissed, you know, but it was... Well, a it great breaks game. your heart, but that's what this game does. Sure. In spite of the thunderstorms and the lightning, we expect a crowd of more than 20,000 here at Rosenblatt tonight for game two of the College World Series Finals. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick, Oral Hershiser, Robin Ventura. It's great to have you with us from the College World Series. And what a great way to start last night, an extra inning game. And Oral, it was LSU that came through in the clutch. Yeah, in their first three wins, they had averaged the victory by seven runs. So they had to flux their muscle, but in a clutch way. In the ninth inning, DJ LeMayhew came through. They were down to their last out. This double drives in two to tie the game. And then we went on to the 11th, and Mikey Ma took on a 1-2 curveball up the middle, drives in his sixth run of the College World Series, no bigger than that one. And on the mound tonight for the LSU Tigers, Austin Ross takes the mound. His last start against Southern, six and two-thirds, two earned runs, a no decision. That was all the way back in the regionals, but they're giving him the ball tonight, and LSU is hoping for a good one. Well, last night we expected Texas to put on a display of all of its small ball skills. But, Robin, we got a power surge instead. Well, they found a, pow a power surge at the College World Series. They've hit a lot of home runs. 20% of their home run totals for the year have been hit at this College World Series. Five of them last night, and they, and they lost. They're going to have to find a way to come back, score some runs, get some momentum, and feel good about themselves because they played a good game last night and still lost. 
Let's go down to the field. Aaron Andrews. Mike, thanks so much. Well, after that tough and dramatic loss for Texas, the players were telling me they were just so exhausted because of the extra innings and also the heat last night. None of them even talked to each other about the loss. They said they wanted to get back into their rooms, rehydrate, and just get some rest. As you guys mentioned, that rain delay today, Texas was in their locker room for about an hour and a half, joking around, playing some games. And as several of the guys told me, they feel like that really benefited them. They were able to get some fluids in them, kind of just break up the routine and just chill out a little bit. Also, the rain, it cooled things off here, which is great news at Rosenblatt. And guys like Cameron Rupp, who was the only Longhorn to get an IV last night, really appreciates the nice weather right now. All right, thanks, Aaron. Kyle Peterson joins us after the break. Then first pitch, will LSU take its sixth national title or will Texas send us on to Wednesday night? It's the CWS Finals, live from the Johnny. The NCAA College World Series is presented on ESPN by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Buick. The renaissance continues with the new 2010 lacrosse. Welcome back to Omaha. After about an hour and 40 minute rain delay, we're almost ready to go. First, down to Kyle Peterson. Thank you, Mike. For Paul Maneri and this LSU team, it's almost like he was raised for this moment. The son of a college coach, his father Demi won a thousand games growing up. Now he leads an LSU program that has won five national titles. If they're to win their six, they'll have to do it against a team that has done just that. Six national titles over the years for Texas. And if he's going to win his first, he'll have to do it against one of the best in the game in Augie Garrido. If anybody would have asked me before the tournament began, who would you like to meet in the finals, I would have said Texas. Not because I think we have a better chance to beat Texas, but just because of the tradition and the history of Texas Longhorn baseball. And I guess if we're to win our first national championship, speaking of me personally, it's only appropriate that we would have to do it against the winningest coach of all time that's already got five national championships in his back pocket. That would certainly make it special if we could pull it off. And Mikey's got his LSU team playing their best baseball of the year. They lost the opener of the SEC tournament, have not lost yet. They come in tonight, winners of 14 in a row. And Kyle, have they been impressive out here? They have not made an error. They have played exceptional baseball. And Paul Maneri, one of only two coaches to have ever, or one of four coaches to have brought two programs out to the College World Series. Of course, Augie Garrido has won with two different schools. And Paul Maneri trying to fill that one blank on his resume. He could do it tonight if he can go 2 0 against the Texas Rangers. And here come the Tigers. I said Texas Rangers. They might be able to beat the Texas Rangers. Who knows? Let's take a look at our Capital One starting lineups. The Longhorns with Torres, Tucker, Belt, Moldenauer, Rupp, Keys, Rowe, Clark, and Loy. Moldenauer couldn't have had a better night well, last night. Well, you're looking for a hot hitter. He's three for three last night. Has hit all three of his home runs for the year at the College World Series. Hitting them at the right time. Austin Ross gets the call for LSU. Six and seven Bulldogs. Well, a very solid college pitcher, a mixed guy completely. The ERA is high because he leaves the ball up sometimes, but he can touch 93. But today, with this win, an odd win for Omaha after, this, after the storm. The wind is blowing in, so high mistakes by pitchers you might get away with. Opponents hitting 300 off of him this year. Here's the defense for LSU. They have been perfect here in Omaha. Landry, Matsuk, and Mitchell. Tremendous speed out there. Helenihi, Nola, LeMayu, and Schimpf across the infield. Schimpf moves from left field in place of Ochinko, and Gibbs is behind the plate. So we always say you need good defense and good pitching to win out here. How about perfect defense? They've been superb. No champion has ever left here without an error. LSU has a chance to do that. And they've made all the routine plays, obviously, and a couple of spectacular ones. And this is a team that we discovered early in this tournament simply shows no holes in its game. And Texas desperate to find one tonight because they have to win this one. 
Well, well, I think they have, you know, they have holes, but you know, you have to find them, and, th and that's the job of Texas tonight: is find yourself a hole and exploit it. And with a freshman shark stop, Austin Nola, Paul Maneri was prophetic, knowing that he had to improve his defense during the season. He put Austin Nola in, and that defense improved, and that was all to try and win a national championship. Here's the weather conditions right now. We expect at least three hours of good weather before anything else comes in. It's 82 degrees. Actually really comfortable right now with a northeast wind, which is unusual here. It's swirling most of the time it's been blowing in. I know knuckleball pitchers are about the only guys that see, like to see the wind blowing out. I'm sure you'd love to see flags like this when you were pitching. Well, whenever you pitch, you always want to know what the wind's doing. If it's swirling here, Austin, Austin Ross on the mound needs to be checking with his fielders every inning about what it's doing. And the fielders need to check on every pitch, well, don't they? That, especially today. I mean, the, the wind's been blowing about four different ways since that storm came through, and you always want to check the flags. You also want to check anything that's on the stadium just to get a check. Torres leads it off, a 297 hitter, the starting third baseman for this club. Hasn't done particularly well here in Omaha, only four hits and 19 trips, but he does have a home run. Austin Ross last started on May 29th in the regionals against Southern. He's pitched twice here in the College World Series, both in relief, once good, once bad. That one's up and in. Joe Burleson, the home plate umpire. Have six working the championship series, right and left field umpires as well and these guys have done a terrific job out here again this year and Torres draws the draws the opening walk and Ross gets an immediate visit from his catcher Micah Gibbs well immediately we'll see if Texas wants to play small ball if they're going to sacrifice the out or are they going to make Austin Ross throw the ball over the plate before they start their offensive machine. Well, with a guy throwing four straight, for four straight balls, you're, you're probably going to take the first pitch at least, at least take till a strike. I mean, I, I think that's probably what's going to happen. Then you'll see something else happen. Travis Tucker has eight sacrifices this year. Most of the guys on this club have done a great job, and this one's thrown away down the right field line by Gibbs as he tried to throw behind the runner. Torres made a wide turn and goes back to second base. First error of the College World Series for LSU. Well, that's just a case of a, a bunner bunning through this pitch. He's not bunning. He takes his bat back, and now the first baseman doesn't go back to the bag. He's not really expecting a throw to first base. And sometimes when you get a lot of first basemen, different first basemen, you forget to just go back. And you have to go back to the bag just in case. Ryan Schimpf had played left field for most of this College World Series. He was the late defensive replacement in the shift last night, but he is not the ordinary first baseman. He's the second baseman who moved to left field this year. One and one to Tucker as Ross finally got one in the strike zone. Another one in perfect bunt toward third. Pelinehi, nice play, throws him out. Well, this is a great play by Derek Helnihi. The one thing you know he's going to bunt to your side. As a third baseman, you know this is a great bunt by Travis Tucker. But he comes in, gets it on the bare hand, and gets a strong throw off going to first base. But you have to do let go of that ball when your right foot's on the ground. So you get the maximum amount of oomph on that ball over to first base. LSU brings the infield in with a runner at third, one out in the first. For Brandon Belt. Well, I love the decision because LSU has a lot of pop and they think they can really score some runs. Austin Ross on the mound, probably looking for some support. He doesn't want to just give up that run. So Paul Maneri showing some confidence in his pitcher and his offense. Belt, a 326 hitter, fouls this one out of play. And it's no balls and two strikes. 
to the Texas first baseman. Well, you're going into this you, as a defense. You just made an error, your first error of the, of the tournament. Come back, somebody make a good play to get that momentum back where you feel like you're playing good defense. High fastball. A ball and two strikes to Brandon Belt, who has eight home runs this year. And most of his power to the opposite field. He struggled yesterday. As did his teammates with 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. All of their offense came from solo home runs. Which was very unexpected. And with the wind blowing in tonight, you're not going to expect him to get any of them tonight. Not from guys low in the order, especially. Breaking pitch, base hit, and Texas will take the lead 1-0 on an RBI single. Well, Belt does a good job not chasing the high fastball. He falls behind in the count, gets into a two-strike count. Austin Ross tried to give him two high fastballs to try and punch him out to save the run. But then the curveball comes back, and you got to bounce this pitch. He throws the curveball for a strike. Right now, you throw a curveball that starts like a middle of the plate fastball and bounces, you got a better chance of getting him out. And now Russell Moldenauer, who had a game for the ages last night, takes a fastball. Longhorns have been terrific when they jumped on top this year. Now we're hitting 417 in Omaha swings over the top of that one. Well, you're looking at all these home runs these guys hit. You know, this one right here was just precious center field. A couple were windblown, but when you're feeling good at the plate, it just makes your offense that much better going to the plate, especially with an offensive type field that you don't feel like you have to do too much. All you got to do is put it in the air. Moldenauer has saved all of his home run power for Omaha. Three in the College World Series. He had none during the regular season. I think it's a lot for their offense to come out in the first inning and not hit a solo, uh, not hit a home run at all, but actually get a guy on base and knock him in. I mean, that, that's an important mindset for an offense, especially after the last night with all the home runs that come back with a base hit to score a guy. Yeah, I'll bet that is a big confidence lift. Pitch out. Texas changed its entire offense last night. They score runs out here. But in the regular season, only 18% came on home runs. Here, 46.5% have come on home runs. Another pitch out. Well, two pitches earlier, Brandon Bell, you could tell he was leaning. He was trying to read the pitcher going to second base, and he stumbled a little bit before Austin Ross threw to home plate. So now they have two pitch outs. So now would be a good time to go. Moldenauer is a double play candidate if he hits it on the ground. Texas as a team is grounded into three double plays in the tournament. And Moldenauer has had all three of them. So Augie Garrido is thinking to avoid that. Belt has 14 stolen bases down at first, so he can run. Brown in a short. This could be another double play, but it's booted to throw across. Not in time. Austin Nola got the force, but couldn't make the play at first. It's not going to be an error, at least officially, but it's another poor defensive play by LSU. Well, it is a ball. He has to keep that in front of him, and, th and that's the first thing that's the most important. He does a good job of that. This ball's hit up the middle. It's a short hop. It comes up on him, gets it with his glove, and at least gets the guy at second base. You don't always want to have to to get two, but this is a good play by Austin Nola to just get it over there, give your first baseman a chance to catch it. But he does a nice job of just keeping it in front of him and getting the guy out at second base. The, the worst case scenario is you try and do too much and you don't get either of them. Make sure you get one of them. Paul Maneri came out to ask about it. 
So Maldenauer is at first with two out for Cameron Rupp, the right handed batting catcher. Drafted by the Nationals last year. Line drive into right, that's a base hit. Maldenauer will hold at second base. The second single of the inning. This all started with a base on balls to Torres and an error on the catcher's throw trying to pick him off at first. Ross has been no secret here in the first inning. And now Kevin Keyes, who is having one of the best World Series for this team. Big hit, 6'4", 225. Hitting 400 here in Omaha. Takes a fastball at the knees. Four hundred in the regional and super regional, so he is on fire in postseason. Exactly what you want. He's a very good low ball hitter. You see where he's taking his little practice swing down there. He's telling you where he likes it. Guys will usually take practice swings for their favorite pitches. Now I know Robin never did that because he was crafty. I never took a practice swing. <laughs> That's true. He didn't want to give me any information. <laughs> Keys last night had one of the solo shots. Well, like Oral said, this ball's down, and he likes it down. Keeps his head down, just drops the hammer, drops that barrel right on it. And that's where he likes He doesn't want the ball up. He wants it down in, which is odd for a righty. Breaking pitch, chopped outside third foul. Well, the two fastballs that Austin Ross threw to Mr. Belt that were up, that he tried to get the strikeout out with man on third. Belt Those high. No, he needs to throw the high fastball to Mr. Kevin Keyes. And right now he's made an adjustment and he's keeping the ball down, but he's doing it to a low ball hitter. He needs to climb the ladder with this guy. A ball and two strikes. Up and in, foul away. Well, you saw right there on that swing, he actually has a little hitch with his hands, and that hitch is okay if you're going to drop it on a low ball. But if you hit your hands a little bit, you drop them, and you get that, see that little buggy whip where he, all of a sudden the bat's really not in a hitting position when he goes to start. So his swing is going to be late on something on the inner half of the plate. That's sort of an odd follow through as well. Fastball sky to straightaway center field. Matuk with the wind pushing it in will make the catch. But a couple of base hits for Texas and the Longhorns get on the board first. One nothing as we go to the bottom of the first. Welcome back to the College World Series. We're in Omaha, Nebraska, where Texas is leading LSU one to nothing. Let's take a look at our Capital One starting lineups for the Tigers of LSU. They come in 55 and 16. Lemayu, Shimp, Dean, Gibbs, Matuk, Mitchell, Landry. That's a lineup change for tonight. Helenihi and Nola. And Mitchell, boy, has he been impressive. Well, very impressive with all the tools. First round draft pick by the White Sox. Outstanding young player. And I'll tell you what, a two sports star looking for a second national championship ring. Already has one from the OSU 7 football team. And this is Taylor Youngman, who didn't even break a sweat last night when he came into the game. Well, he's pitched very well here at the College World Series, except for last night. Six straight balls was taken out by Augie Garrido, but I think he was trying to get a successful short relief appearance out of him, get Texas to win that game, and then maybe skip him today. But with their backs against the wall, he's going with his freshman ace. And this man at 6'7", throwing that downhill plane, he's going to be an exceptional prospect. Not only now, but his junior year, the scouts' eyes are going to light up. Longhorn's defense has been really good all year long. Clark Rowe and Keys in the outfield. Rowe is a tremendous center fielder. Torres, Lloyd, Tucker, and Belt around the infield. And Cameron Rupp behind the plate. 
LeMayu will lead it off against Taylor Youngman, whose ERA overall 2.21 here in Omaha. It is 1.42. LeMayu has lit it up here at the College World Series at Rosenblatt, hitting 474, nine hits in 19 trips. Fastball up and in at 92. Another guy who's been on fire in postseason. Fastball low. Well, if I'm and young hitter, starting off exactly yeah. the way he pitched last night. Yeah, especially if you're LSU, you're gonna you know what he did last night, and you're gonna come in there, you're gonna make him throw strikes before you do anything. See how he reacts to last night's outing. Strike at the knees. LeMayhew has been right in the middle of everything in the 11th inning. He got on, stole second before Mikey Mott took, drove. In. Fastball chopped toward third. Torres throws him out one gone in the last inning. Close play at first base. Let's listen to Paul Maneri and first base umpire Steve Manders. Yep. Uh, I said. Because the toe was in the dirt? No, the foot, foot was on the bag. His, his foot, foot was, his foot was on the, yep. Runner's foot was on the bag. I, I yep. saw it the other way. I thought you got it because the kid stumbled and it looked ugly and the ball's in the I thought it had a pretty good look. I had his foot on the bag. Nice audio between uh, Steve Manders and Paul Maneri. Nice gentlemanly exchange. Many got it right. I, you know, that's a good call. Yeah. You, know, you just got to make sure that you get it right, and, and he did. You watch for the foot and you listen for the ball. That's the umpire mechanic. Shimp swings over the top of one at 85. Another guy with a, uh, a great year and a great series, great postseason. Fifth round draft choice of the Toronto Blue Jays. It was interesting last night that LSU really had to play a nail biter. You know, they have their first three wins, the average difference was seven runs. Now one was nine, one was you know eight and four, but it was uh, it was unbelievable to watch them with their backs against the wall and things that Texas had to do multiple times to get into that game. One and two on the corner struck him out. During this win streak, they've had a lot of laughers. Six plus runs, 10 different times. And they have scored first 12 times. Only been behind six, 10 innings during the entire streak. And whenever they've fallen behind, they've responded really well and quickly most of the time. Blake Dean, the power in this lineup, number two on the club with 17 home runs. He has driven in 70 this year. Tried to check his swing and couldn't. Love those beads, don't they? <laughs> I used to see him everywhere. Interesting. All up and down this lineup, these guys have just great numbers. It's interesting that the kind of the crowd is uh, maybe a little wet, hasn't dried out yet. <laughs> They're not the rain delay. That usually last night it was really loud early. Missed with a high fastball, two and two. So those young men and women were out there cheering for each individual player at times, hoping to get them to come out of the dugout during the rain delay, chanting their names. Struck him out. Fan two in the first inning. LSU goes scoreless in the first inning for the first time at the College World Series. One nothing Texas after one. Through the tournament, we've looked back at the stars who have made the journey from Omaha to the Bigs. One has gone all the way from Rosenblatt to Cooperstown. Dave Winfield. 1973 was a culmination of a pretty good career at Minnesota. Pitching, hitting, Big Ten champs, All-American. 
playing in the College World Series, it's the last chance in the highest level of non-professional baseball. So it, uh, it suited me well and just kind of prepared me for that uh, next step in professional baseball. Drafted high in all three major sports, even though he never played college football, they thought, why not? Well, he with was, all that talent. Yeah, he was a great pitcher. There's a great story of him pitching, you know, eight innings going out in the left field and USC started coming back and they wanted to bring him back in. They were they're gonna try and bring him back in. He was such a good pitcher. He said no. He said not today. <laughs> I'm gonna be in San Diego next week. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the Padres said no. As it turned out, pitching was not going to be his forte. Connor Rowe will lead it off for Texas here in the second. We'll see the seven, eight, nine men in the order. Tapped out in front of the plate. That's foul. Connor Rowe's deceptive center fielder. He's very fast twitch guy. Quick out there. That equates into a fast twitch at the plate that quick hands quick bat speed no matter what happens the rest of his life he will remember the walk off homer to beat Arizona State the other night that one's on the corner only his eighth home run of the season that was it a little backdoor breaking ball that Created that little pile right there that he got out in front of and flicked out of here. Did he check no, his no. swing? He did check it. Two and two. Well, this is a slider down and away, and you know he's trying to stay on that inside pitch, and he becomes susceptible to that pitch going away from him. Fastball back inside, a bullet right to Helenihi at third. Les Miles, the LSU head football coach who won the championship a couple of years ago, here supporting the baseball program. And it's nice to see all those coaches. Roy Williams did it with North Carolina. Coaches from other sports showing up to uh, show their support. And we're told Les is tweeting. <laughs> is he tweeting Kyle? He's trying to get on Kyle's uh, Facebook page, I'm sure. Oh, he's looking for Kyle. This ball is hit deep to left field. Landry out of here. Landry got back to the track. That's as far as he could go, and Preston Clark with a home run. Things with having this late start is the shadows aren't very bad. And this is a slider that just hangs in the middle of the plate, and Preston Clark knows what to do with it. All these guys are really getting some good swings on Austin Ross. It's just one of the things you got to get the ball down, especially in a ballpark that's as good to hit in as this one. And here's another guy, Preston Clark. That's only his third home run this year. It's the guys with no numbers who have produced. With different sizes in the stadium. Texas plays at home in a big ballpark. And Augie's kind of designed the team around that with small ball, line drives, and ground sure. balls. But since they've gotten here and they've gotten to play a lot of games, a few guys have established some fly balls, a little bit of an uppercut, got some backspin on some balls, and driven it out of here. It's like, okay, boys, take a look and swing away. And now Brandon Lloyd. Stands in at 293. He's out of Rowlett, Texas. Drafted out of high school by the Orioles, but wanted to play ball at Texas. What's ironic is that Les Miles is trying to tweak with Kyle 
And they're about 35 feet from each other. <laughs> he could just wave at them. Well, 15 year olds text each other when they're right next to each other. So that. <laughs> That was the seventh different Longhorn to Homer in the College World Series. Fastball misses here. And Texas knows they're going to need more than two runs to beat LSU. They're just going to try to add on and add on and add on. Breaking pitch down to third. Boy, Helene, he has been good down there. Throws out Loy for the second out of the inning. But we talked about this being a smaller ballpark and a home run friendly ballpark. Look at the power alleys. Much bigger at Dish Fog Field. And the home run disparity. 40 games they played to hit 18 home runs. They've hit 12 and only five out here. Well, it's not just the, the distance, it's just the way the ball carries sure. as well. There's a lot of wind, it's lighter here. It's just a different place to hit. This one's through the hole in the left field for Torres back at the top of the order. He walked in the first, singles here in the second. Young like watching that. Uh, that lead go up. That's the best place to be, oh, isn't it? The dugout when, you when your team is pounding away. As a starting pitcher, you sit there and say, boys, take all the time you want <laughs> if you're getting runs. I'll figure out a way to stay loose. Tucker sacrificed his first time up, hitting 295 on the season, 412 here. Hey, back. And has one of those solo home runs that we talked about. Torres, 12 steals and 13 tries this year if they want to run. Oh. Texas' first couple innings have been very good. Play. This is going to be catcher's interference. As that swing tipped the glove of Micah Gibbs. This is the second time we've seen this called here in the College World Series. The catchers get a little aggressive, either reaching out for the pitch or a little tight to help their pitcher throw strikes. You see Micah Gibbs right up there, really close. Just kind of emergency swing hack right there. Glove on the inside. Just Yep, just catching the edge of it. Moldenauer is in. That's the second of the game. Errors on Micah Gibbs, who was Team USA's catcher a year ago, will play again this year. He's a good one. Unusual for him to make mistakes. You know, if the catcher's glove doesn't go past where the end of the batter's box is, I don't think you should be able to reach back. I don't know if it happened on that particular occasion, but earlier in the tournament, it, you know, obviously that one was a little bit different. But if he, if he doesn't reach all the way out there and you're kind of swinging backwards, you, you got to have a little lead way. It's an odd feeling, too, yeah. when the bat touches the catcher's glove. Your first off. What yeah, everybody this? looks around when it happens. Yeah. It's such an odd play that everybody, you know, when the umpire comes out saying, you know, we have interference, you know, everybody's looking around like, on who? <laughs> it's one of those things you hear two sounds. Fastball right in there. And three and one, and LSU quickly getting somebody ready. That's Nolan Kane, the right hander. You never want a game to get out of hand early, especially when you have a chance to put it away, but they're in danger of doing that right here. Got him picked off. Torres 
Bowles in a rundown, and they got it. Torres picked off second base. But another home run off the bat of a Texas Longhorn. This from Preston Clark. And it's 2-0 Texas. Two nothing. Bottom of the second. Texas over LSU. We check in with Kyle Peterson. Kyle, thank you, Mike. You know, just a few days ago was Father's Day, and a tough Father's Day for Mikey Matuk. It was 15 years ago that day that he lost his father. His dad, Mike Matuk, was a linebacker at LSU, great college football player. But when Mikey was just four, passed away unexpectedly due to a heart abnormality. When I talked to Mikey about it today, he said, "You know what? Was raised by my mom. Me and my sister were, but always under the watchful eye of his father's four brothers." When I asked him about growing up in the game of baseball, I said, you know, the one guy that made the biggest difference was a guy named Mike Robb. He said, my uncles played football. Not a lot of them played baseball. Mike Robb was the guy that really taught him the game. His mom was there the whole time. And when he hit that home run last night, he said, and that felt good. And I think I got a little help from the guy upstairs. Uh, it's tough for a lot of these kids, the circumstances they have grown up. And that's uh, obviously a very difficult thing to go through. So many things you miss. Gibbs the catcher leading it off here in the LSU second inning against Taylor Youngman who has certainly been impressive so far. Gibbs hitting 350 here in Omaha. Been a big part of this team 33. Remind you of Jason Veritek, switch hitting captain catcher. Doesn't have the C on his chest, but Paul Maneri says he's right in there with one of the leaders. This one's chopped slowly toward third. Torres on the run has plenty of time against the catcher, makes the play. Matuk comes to the plate with a 389 average in Omaha. Really wasn't sure he wanted to come to LSU, but mom had to kick him out of the house, get him out of the nest. Really wanted to stay home and be with her. Takes a high fastball. Mom must be a good cook. <laughs> no dummy. <laughs> they all are down there, aren't yeah. they? His home, Lafayette, Louisiana. Made some spectacular defensive plays in center field. Again, a chopper to third. Torres fires across, two gone. Our analyst, Kyle Peterson, you've already seen on Twitter giving live updates and insights on all the college baseball storylines throughout this College World Series championship. You can search ESPN College World Series on Facebook and become a fan to get behind the scenes access to video, trivia, polls, and discussions. Kyle just tweeting his heart away right now. Here's Jared Mitchell. He's probably the most impressive athlete I've seen out here. As far as the tools, that's for sure. He uh, he's really needs some more baseball reps, but the arm, the legs play, the bat speed, the power to come. I think we can say without fear of contradiction, he's the fastest player we've ever seen at the College World Series. I mean, he's got some serious speed. Yeah, any ball in the outfield, if he's on first base, he has a chance to score. And he gets right handers. He doesn't get cheated. He gets some good rips. Going for his second national championship ring at the 07 football ring. This one is hit to left. Drops for a base hit in front of Preston Clark. Big turn for Jared Mitchell. First hit of the ball game for LSU. It comes with two outs here in the second. 
Well, this ball's tailing on the outside, and this that's really important because he has that open stance. You're going to have to go out and get that ball with Taylor Youngman. He sinks the ball away, and it's important for all these lefties to try and hit the ball the other way and get that out of your mind that you got to pull everything because really his weakness is going to be you're going to take him the other way. Mitchell with 36 stolen bases this year. He's been caught nine times, which is indicative of the fact that he's got the great speed, but he's not a base dealer yet. He's just a runner. Well, I think that's just yet. That's the key word. Oh, absolutely. That's the key word to all that. Talk about somebody with the tools to have a brilliant future. Oh, absolutely. You know, the White Sox are high on him. It's, you know, I think that's the other thing. They, they draft a guy that has all the tools that just, you know, he just needs more time to play. Like Oral said, he hasn't had a lot of reps in baseball. He's been mostly football. Leon Landry, the sophomore from Baton Rouge, is at the plate. He's only had two official at bats here in Omaha. He's 0 for 2. He's drawn a walk. Only three short of the school record for steals. He's safe. Well, tools wise, I mean, he reminds me a lot of Carl Crawford. I, I think, you know, the way you watch him run, just speed, power, you know, all, all the things combined. He has a lot of Carl Crawford. From grounded toward the hole in short, cut off by the third baseman across, real close, and he made it. That little spin by Torres. I think it was the difference. Yeah, I don't think he was going to have a chance at him either way because if he would have turned the other way, he wouldn't have had a strong enough throw to get him anyway. I, I mean, that's just what speed does for you. Well, this is a change in the order, too. Augie Garrido arguing over this right now. Bang, bang play at first, but Leon Landry was not on the lineup yesterday. Sean Ochinko was a right handed hitter. Pulmonary tried to get another left handed hitter in the lineup, and his speed and hitting from the left side allowed him to beat this out. If the right hand hitter hits the same ground ball, he's out. Well, not only that, you, you have the fact that Mitchell's running to second base, so there was no chance to get the guy at second base. Right there, you're just between a rock and a hard place trying to find an out. And he beat it easily, you can tell from the replay. And now Helen E. He was trying to break out of a horrible slump. He's one for 16 here in Omaha. And he grounds it right at the shortstop and through. Off the glove of Law. Mitchell will score easily. Landry is into third base. Well, we were talking earlier about the distance of the ballparks in Texas and this ballpark, but I think the major difference is the ground. They play on a natural surface in Texas, and now you're playing on dirt, and you got to get over there and try and get yourself in front of that. Balls pick up speed in the infield. As soon as they hit that dirt the first time, you're going to get a nasty hop. So you have to keep that in front of you, especially with a guy on second base. If you don't make the play, at least keep it in front of you. Here at Texas Stadium, that field turf, the only dirt at the stadium is on the mound. Yeah, the rest even, of it is a field turf. Yeah, even at home plate, it is all turf. It's just a very odd field, especially, you know, you can play, you get truer hops. Now you go to a grass field, it's different. Austin Nola, runners at first and third, two out. Chased the breaking ball and didn't get it. 0 oh 2. It's a hard hit ball by Helen Ehe. It's an error on the shortstop. So both teams with early miscues. Nola lays off this one. Well, Nola has grown leaps and bounds this year. So freshman shortstop started on the bench observing was inserted in the lineup for defense and his average has continued to climb and his comfort at the plate. Paul Maneri thinks someday he'd probably hit third for his team. He sees that much as far as his intelligence, the way he has savvy for the game. And Paul really likes this kid. He's a high top recruit. And with a winning university, Paul had enough confidence to insert a freshman into his starting lineup midseason. That was part of the lineup change that really jump started their late season run. Augie 
Garrido knowing they had a chance to get out of the inning with nobody scoring. 2-2 to Nola. Breaking pitch called strike three. They strand runners at first and third, but LSU pushes one across. Les Miles will be our guest when we come back to Omaha for the College World Series. We start the top of the third with Texas leading two and one, and we check in with Aaron Andrews. Aaron. All right, Mike, thanks so much. Head coach Les Miles, you were, you were tweeting yourself, right? That's the only person that'll listen to you? Uh, I, I have some small thousand or so that, you know, listen. We showed it on Sports family, Center last night. Family. Absolutely. Coach, honestly, there's really nothing like Tiger Stadium on a Saturday night, but you're here at Rosenblatt, pro LSU crowd. What do you think of this place? This is uh, this is a great environment to play a big game, and it's, it's LSU passionate. I mean, I'm certain that the Texas Longhorns are here, but we just don't feel them. And, uh, but the uh, game's down a run, key piece of the game coming. I, I, like, I like where we're at. Got a couple of guys on the team. Mitchell, Landry just got a few hits. What's it been like watching them back at home play here in Omaha? It's really neat. Our, our football team follows them very closely. And, you know, anytime that any of those guys, whether Chad in pitching or Jared gets a hit, our, our team's all over it. And it's, uh, there's a real close relationship by, you know, by from the football team and the baseball team. And it's, uh, it's really neat. It's nice to see an athlete have the opportunity to achieve at the very highest level in two sports. Right. Serious talk though, come on. When Paul Maneri comes into your office, and we all know how intense you are, hey Les, I need to borrow a couple of guys from the football team, I gotta take them out of practice. What is your reaction really? Well, it didn't quite go like yeah, that, right. I just want you to know. Uh, we recruited guys that played baseball, and they wanted to play baseball, and so we wanted to give them that opportunity, and it, it wasn't that hard. Paul Maneri is a wonderful man and a great coach, and it's it's easy to work the schedule out. What are you going to tweet about this interview? I mean, do I make a passing grade? Do I get one, or what? I beg your pardon? Do, what are you going to tweet about this interview? Do I get a passing grade, or what? Uh, one of the enjoyable moments in the third inning. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. <laughs> He's such a liar. I didn't know we graded tweets now. This is Ryan Bird, the new pitcher. He'll come on here in the third, his second appearance in the College World Series and his 13th game this season. Senior that's played many roles, kind of a soft lefty with a good curveball. And he'll face Brandon Belt, who was on base when Michael Torres was caught stealing as they picked him off the second base. Belt four hits and three driven in here in Omaha. Started his night with a single back in the first inning. Breaking pitch popped up. Helene he on the grass makes the catch. Well, I think tonight you might be in for a Johnny Holstaff night for for LSU. I think you you were expecting Austin Ross to go a little bit further. Well, Anthony Renata is their guy that could have went tonight on three days rest, but he'll go tomorrow if there is a game or maybe late in this game if they're ahead and pulmonary thinks they can put it away. He's one of their aces that has had a bumpy outing and a good outing. And they think he is back on the beam and ready to go. You know, if they use him for a few pitches in relief tonight, will he still be able to go in game three as a starter? Yeah, it'll be like. They're doing with Taylor Youngman over on the other side with Texas right. tonight having him pitch. But Renata. Palmineri was a little bit afraid of the heat and bringing him back on three days rest. We had guys cramping. We had Mikey Matsuk take an IV during the game. Fortunately for LSU at that time, they had a long inning. We were able to get it in them. But three days rest, College World Series, a big last outing. I think Palmineri made the right decision in getting him out there and fully rested or in relief tonight. Of course, with the rain delay and the rain that we had, it cooled off considerably here. Tomorrow is also expected to be very warm, although not as blistering as the last two days have been. Well, this is comfortable right now. It this is. is very nice. Compared to what it was when they were going to actually take their normal BP, it was about 100 degrees. And 
you know that storm came through here and, and, and now it's about as comfortable as you can get it's perfect. Three balls and a strike to Moldenauer. And he clobbers one to right field. That baby is a mile out of here. Well, how about Russell Moldenauer? No home runs during the regular season. He comes to Omaha and says, I like this place. Four home runs at the College World Series. Well, sometimes you just like ballparks, and Russell Moldenhauer has fallen in love with Rosenblatt Stadium. This is a slider that hangs right in his wheelhouse, inner half, and, you know, when you're feeling it the way Moldenhauer is feeling it, you know, any pitch that's right in the zone, you feel like you can crush. And he has tied a College World Series record held by several guys with four home runs in the series. And he's, I'll guarantee you, he's the only one that hit all four of them here. And had none during the regular season. Boy, that thing was clobbered. Cameron Rupp takes one outside. I mean, I'm still shocked. You know, they've hit 52 home runs on the year. 13 of them have been hit in these games in Omaha. Last three at bats, Moldenhauer's had have been home runs. He was lifted for a pinch hitter last night, remember? Well, hopefully the Royals get him, but if they don't, at least the Omaha Royals should get him. <laughs> this pitch is popped up behind first base. Going to be a tough play for Mitchell. All that great speed, he can't get there. Cameron Rupp on the way to second. Just a little blooper. No chance for the first baseman Ryan Schimpf and Jared Mitchell racing in still couldn't get there. Well you love the effort but this is where baseball reps will give them a little more finesse. I don't think I go for that play with one out and allow that runner to get into scoring position especially after your pitcher just gave up a home run. That was very very close I know but I'm going to keep the double play in order and just play that one safe. He will learn situations he will learn where to use his speed but you love the tools and you love the effort runner at second with only one out for Kevin Keys he's 0 for 1 tonight Texas answering that LSU run in the bottom of the second here as they bat in the top of the third is there such a thing as speed not being your friend yeah there could be it could be, but I think he's got even when he runs bad routes, he's going to catch a lot of balls until he learns how to run good routes. Because he has that kind of speed that he can outrun a ball. He just outrun it. Yeah, I think there's some guys, you know, they're so fast that they think you know, they, they can catch think everything. They can get it, and that's a good thing. I mean, really, for him to go after that ball, I mean, you know, the, the other thing is it's it's been wet, so he's going to slide a, a long way because he is so fast. Which is going to allow that. Maybe, you know, on a dry field, he doesn't go as far. Les Miles getting a lot to tweet about. This one is hit to deep right. Mitchell back on the track. He'll make the catch about two steps from the wall. Cameron Ruff will advance to third. Keys gave it a ride, not quite far enough. Now two outs. Well, I was going to say, this is a bad matchup for LSU. That low ball hit an outfielder, and then he drives it out there. He does a good job getting back quickly, using the speed. He didn't have to get all the way back. He didn't time it. He got under it, ran to a spot. That was very good outfield play. Yeah, he's already got that idea that he can't drift back. He's got to get to a spot and be comfortable with it. Even set himself for the throw pretty well. Two outs now for Connor Rowe, who lined hard to the third baseman. This time he lines it by the third baseman. And Texas gets another run. Connor Rowe on his way to second. He'll make it standing up. Well, they brought their hitting shoes tonight. Rupp scores 4-1 Longhorns. 
Well, you're worried about all the home runs. You got to be able to knock in a run. And Connor Rowe right here gets a down and in slider and keeps it fair. You really got to get your hands through the ball to be able to keep that fair. It's not always that easy. Sometimes you pull that thing foul, but he does a nice job pulling his hands through, keeping it right inside the third base bag. Preston Clark stands in with a runner at second. Clark homeward back in the second inning to left field. And now Paul Maneri wants him to stall a little bit as Bird is getting roughed up. Kane is back up and warming. And that may do it for Ryan Bird. Texas trying to steal the momentum after losing it to LSU last night. They've got a good start. They're up 4-1 in the third, and we've got a pitching change. With John Crock, I'm Carl Rabbits. Your baseball tonight extra takes you to Isotopes Park in Albuquerque, New Mexico with John Crook. We're looking at Manny Ramirez. He's facing Manny Parra, who, of course, pitched for the Milwaukee Brewers this season and has since been sent down. So at least a major league quality pitcher against, obviously, a very good hitter. Manny returned to the majors July 3rd. It's going to take him a little while to round into form. Boy. Well, it is, Carl. You know, he took the first couple pitches just trying to get, trying to get his timing, trying to get a gauge on Manny Parra. But, you know, then Manny Parra decided he's going to get nasty with him. That good breaking ball right there sets up this pitch right here that Manny kind of kind of gets jammed and flares. And you see right there, okay, my time he's not here. And then he strikes him out with another fastball and ties him up. 0 for 1. Next update shortly, guys. Looking at uh, Manny Ramirez in his first at bat with the Albuquerque Isotopes. You got to love that nickname. I played there when they were the Dukes. Nolan Kane, the new pitcher, the third for LSU tonight. 4.45 ERAs, won five games this year. Senior out of Florida. And he comes on with a runner at second. And Texas tonight much better than uh, 24 hours ago. And the game before that as well. The last two, one for nine, only one run. Tonight they're batting 500 with runners in scoring position. And they're already up four to one. Right now, Paul Manera just trying to piece together some pitchers to trot out there. Toward the hole and through. Connor Rowe with good speed around third. He'll score. Preston Clark delivers an RBI single. LSU has had pitchers on the mound so far tonight that need Texas to get out of the strike zone to make outs. These pitchers have had not had good enough stuff or location to get people out in the strike zone. Hanging breaking balls, lazy breaking balls, high fast balls, and you could say, oh, the odds were against us, that ball hit the hole, but it still hit pretty hard, and they're hitting the ball hard often. So they're due to find some holes. 50 base hits for the Longhorns in four games out here in Omaha. 21 of them have been home runs. But the most impressive thing is the way they have gotten big time singles and doubles in this game to drive in runs and take the lead. Now Brandon Loy. Well, that's the biggest thing for me is you know you have the game last night where you hit all the solo home runs and that's nice but you got to feel a, a rhythm as an offense that you can knock guys in from second base. Those 21 extra base hits not home runs eight of them doubles 13 homers and this shows a lot you know for them to lose a tough game like they lost last night and to come right out of the shoot in the first three innings putting runs up in every inning. Shows a lot of moxie out of this group. Kane misses outside. The 
what did Augie Garrido say yesterday? We just find a way. That's the way it's been all season long. Find a way to win. Two and one from Kane to Brandon Loy. And that one is speared by LeMayu, and he throws him out on a very nice play at second base. The inning is over, but LSU adds to its lead, or Texas does. Three more for the Longhorns. They are up 5 1, middle of the. The prestige and the expectations that go along with the University of Texas baseball program. It's almost like if you go, you know, four years at, at, of college baseball here and don't get a World Series, it's almost like a failure. You know? It's in your job description. If you don't know where Omaha is and you don't take the team to Omaha, then you have fallen short of the minimum requirements. To be able to play at Texas, to put on the uniform every day, is something I want to remember the rest of my life. Texas with six national championships, that's second all time. LSU has five. And the guy who got it going, the legendary Cliff Gustafson, 29 years, won 1,466 games, had national titles in 75 and 83, was also a player for the Longhorns on their 1952 team. Yeah, if you're going to put a face on the program for all, for all those years, it's going to be Cliff Gustafson. You know, many major leaguers had gone through his program and, you know, really ran a, a great program, but it just always seemed like they were in Omaha. That was the one thing. They were, they were always a winning team. And how do you replace a legend? You hire another legend. And they did in the person of Augie Garrido. They got him away from Cal State Fullerton where he won three national championships and picked up two more in Austin. And is now the winningest college baseball coach ever. DJ LeMayu leads it off in the LSU third. Boy, and the way Youngman is throwing 5-1 is a big lead, isn't it? Well, that error is the only reason he gave up the run. And he, he's throwing the ball very, very well. He's got great playing to it. He's showing change in speeds. This one is ripped down the right field line to the wall and off the wall. The leaping Kevin Keyes can't get there. And LeMayu is on his way to third. The throw is wide. He's in there with a leadoff triple. Well, DJ LeMay, this is a ball in the outer half, takes this the other way, not trying to do too much, but he's got a lot of power. I mean, he showed it earlier. Kevin Key's trying to go back and get this ball. Nice effort, hits off the top of the wall. And I think if he actually tries to hit a cutoff, man, it, it would he would have had a better shot at LeMahieu going to third base. He tried to airmail this all the way, and it wasn't on line. But it's going to go a lot quicker if you get that ball lower and get, get it in the hands of one of your fielders. Missed by six inches of being a home run for LeMayu, but he's the third with nobody out for Schimpf. Chases one, the bottom dropped out of that at 84 miles an hour. Schimpf with three home runs here. He's the one guy you would expect to have a lot of power coming in, and he's delivered. 22 home runs on the season. Slaps this one. Caught by the second baseman. Little humpback liner and Tucker chased it to the edge of the infield dirt and made the catch. Well, comparison to two swings on two exact pitches to opposite sides of the plate hitters. Chimp tries to pull a high and away fastball, so he hits it off the end of the bat because there's no more swing left. If he's taking this ball to left field, he hits it like LeMayhew. Blake Dean trying to get the run home from third with one out. Grounds it foul outside first. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. Well, with the infield playing back, they're giving you the run. You got to make sure that you're going to either hit a ball on the ground or at least hit in the outfield. But hit it up the middle. Give LeMahieu a chance to score. Don't hit anything at a corner that's going to be able to come in and get the guy at home plate. When this kid gets his pitch, he doesn't miss it. 
And his best Very swings, disciplined. yeah, his best swings are actually to left field. He's had a lot of winning hits, and he's had a lot of good at bats with guys in scoring position trying to go in that left center gap. In the dirt, blocked by Rupp. LSU, although the sample is small for tonight, 0 for 2, 16 for 49 is great, just shy of 333. Missed with a fastball. Three balls and a strike to Blake Dean with Micah Gibbs on deck. Talking about the heart of this batting order for LSU. Walked him. It's not good pitching for me. You're up four runs. You don't want to, you know, walk this guy set up the double play. You trade him out for a run right there. You don't have to pitch around him or pitch backwards or try and fool him. You go right after him. Take a five to two lead with two out, nobody on. Don't set the table for a potent lineup. Well, it was a good at bat for me for, for Blake Dean. Those are sliders at your back leg. It could be tough pitches if he's trying to come out of his shoes and hit a home run. He's staying in the middle of the field and is able to take that. So that's a good at bat on one hand. The offensive side. Micah Gibbs now. And Youngman misses again. Now first and third, one gone. Infield a double play depth. For Gibbs, who is a double play candidate to catch it. Fastball fouled back. He said Taylor Youngman was thrown very well coming into this inning and he gave up the hit to LeMahieu. That was a high fastball. And then the little humpback liner to second was a high fastball. And now when he's getting the ball down, it's below the knee and kind of running out of the strike zone. But to throw a strike, he's having to start to elevate. That one's in there for a called strike, one and two. Fine line between having control and command. Command throwing it in the strike zone exactly where you want to, to corners and the correct height. Control just being able to throw strikes and usually more elevated pitches. Youngman capable of punching a guy out. More strikeouts than innings pitched this year. Misses with a fastball there. I think that's one of the things that he probably has the confidence that he feels he can get away with that walk is he can strike people out and, yes, and, and sometimes you have that confidence you know you don't care you just want to make pitches that are going to strike hitters out and if you walk them you walk them but come back and, and try and throw it again. Swing and a miss. The fourth strikeout tonight for Taylor Young but and a big one there. To get the second out of the inning. The breaking ball early in the bat for a strike set up that strikeout. That fastball looks like it could come out of the same window for the called strike breaking ball that he took earlier that was a kind of a cookie. But right there, the four seamer blown by him. Now it's up to Montauk who grounded out his first time up. Big situation here for LSU down by four, even though it's early. Good fastball from Youngman. Uh, 95 miles an hour you see on the graphic up there. Montek was late on good fastballs last night. They gave in to him one and two with a curveball. Mikey actually said that he was sitting on it, kind of getting his foot down and reading the pitch. The curveball sped up his bat. It's his mom rooting for a base hit. There's a breaking ball hit down to third. They'll go to second for the force. And out of the inning, runner stranded at first and third, and Youngman leaves the hill with a four-run lead. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series, presented on ESPN by Capital One. Now it's time for our Coke Zero Game Track. 
5-1 Texas after three. Moldenauer is homered three times here in the finals, including tonight. Clark also homered. And Youngman has given up only three hits in the first three innings and fan four. Like to have. Looks Aussie, doesn't it? <laughs> that was for Arizona State, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Maybe somebody left a hat. For Texas, we'll go back to the top of the order. Michael Torres. Who has a single and a walk tonight. And has his average for the College World Series up to 250. Facing Nolan Kane, the third LSU pitcher of the night. Yeah, that was very good changeup right there. Good motion off of a 92 mile an hour fastball comes back with that 82 mile an hour changeup. Very deceptive delivery, kind of short arms that comes out of his shoulder. Could be hard to pick up. One time through the order, if he can locate his pitches. And gets the strikeout. Very herky jerky at the end of his motion. He's got that head snap in there and then the delivery. Later in our broadcast, we'll have a special announcement from Lowe's regarding the 2009 Senior Class Award, the award celebrating the loyalty of seniors that honor their four year commitment to their university. The Senior Class Award recognizes the student athlete for great achievement during competition and in the classroom while staying in school. Torres down on strikes, and now Travis Tucker, the number two hitter in the order. Tucker with a sacrifice and reached on catcher's interference. Well, I think something the world said earlier if he can get one time through the lineup it's tough for a lineup if you haven't seen a guy before you're trying to figure out what he throws if you can get him one time through the lineup, I think Paul Maneri would be happy down to third Helen he throws him out anything hit to the left side of this infield the entire series has been an automatic out with Helen he and Nolan. Glad you could join us from Rosenblatt. We're at the College World Series. This is game two of the best of three final series. And Texas down a game. They have to win tonight to force game three. LSU, 20 years. This would be their sixth national title. How's that for dominance? Brandon Belt one for two tonight popped up and single fifth round draft choice of the Giants. You know, some guys you look at and you just see that they're going to fill out and then also you're going to see that they have tools bat speed but he, he's just going to fill out and be a big strong young man and I think a lot of pro scouts would already project him as he's in the wrong batting stance. And that they're going to clean him up a little bit, and you're going to find even more ability. How much do you mess with somebody and their natural style, their ability to hit a baseball? Well, I think it happens. You, you know, you get to the big leagues, there's going to be guys, they just pitch better. You know, they, they don't miss the, you know, the bad pitches that you lay off. Those are ones that are borderline that you get now that are nasty. They're just the pitchers are better. So when pitchers are better, you, you know, you got to learn how to hit those pitches. And I think it's always changed over the years, you know, that guys throw sinkers, cutters, change-ups, and, and split fingers. And as a hitter, you got to learn how to hit that. A lot of guys in college don't know, you know, how to hit that. So you have to make those adjustments. And I see a, I see a closed stance with somebody who has really long arms and long legs. And I think that people are going to be busting him inside. So that's why I'm thinking maybe this is the wrong stance for him. They might get him once he gets stronger to be a little bit more upright to be able to drop the head and extend the arms and get him off the plate. Right now he's so closed up for a guy who's got such long legs and long arms. I think the big league pitcher will accentuate that inside corner. 
Belt draws a walk here. That'll get Moldenauer to the plate, and he has been on a tear. Last two ball games, three home runs and a single. Well, he's kind of got a groove swing right now. You see all those swings really look like the same thing. Kind of a low pitch out over the plate, and he put a little uppercut on him. He practices to, to fight the uppercut that right there with the upper hand. But when he goes to swing, he's been dropping that back shoulder with a slight uppercut and really launching some balls. He was drafted out of high school by the Angels. Takes this one low. Well, let me take you back in the day. You're talking about stances. Nobody messed with Musial. He turned out pretty well. I mean, he had one of the oddest stances you could ever see, mm -hmm. and yet he was one of the great hitters of all time. Thanks for pulling a Hall of Famer out. You know, Certainly. You want me to pull out another 500 guys that are still in the minor <laughs> leagues? I'll stick, I'll stick with Musial. I'm happy with my choice. <laughs> Ground ball to short on the first. They finally get Moldenauer out. The inning is over. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Still 5-1 Texas. Welcome back. Our score here at the College World Series. Texas over LSU 5-1. Now for a Home Depot coaching clinic. Here's Robin. Well, we saw two different stances in our last two hitters. Brandon Belt was going with the closed stance. He was really closed on what Oral was talking about. The professional pitchers are going to try and exploit the ball on the inner half and bring it back over, kind of what they call a front door. They're going to start at your front hip, bring it back over. So if you're closed off, your first reaction is to flinch which is now going to allow them to bring that ball over the inside part of the plate. And to try and get to that pitch, your bat's going to have to come all the way back around to get it. So this is where you're really vulnerable. If you're going to go with the open stance, you're going to be open to try and protect against that. Now the backdoor slider and the sinker away are going to get you because you're so open that you're going to have to hit it out here. So you're going to have to be open to close to go to the outside pitch and be vulnerable on the inside pitch. Oh, as you look at the video, Brandon Belt right here, you see the close. I can see his back leg from his front leg. The hips close, the arms are long. And that ball, you see, he just wants to flinch with the hip, and then the hands go out away. And then the open stance, you see the back leg, open stance there. He's looking for that ball in, and he's got to stay on the ball away. That pitch he took right there, and he did a really, it was a really good take. It just wasn't something he wanted to swing at. Bottom of the fourth, and Jared Mitchell will lead it off. Facing Taylor Youngman. Then there were guys like uh, Robin who were not vulnerable to anything. Yeah, he was a pretty good hitter. And the seeming thing about Robin was his swing was so smooth that he still generated a lot of power. And we see a lot of that where guys are just so smooth. I thought that Dustin Ackley for North Carolina, one of the greatest college hitters we've seen yeah. in a long, long time. Very smooth at the plate, but still generates a lot of power. Kind of George Brett like, uh, Raul Abanez like, Carlos Beltran. Well, we we marveled at his numbers. He was hitting, I believe, when he left here, when they were eliminated in the College World Series, he was hitting 420, 400 for his career. But Robin, you beat that. I was lucky. I, you know, no. I, you I think lucky. you know he he had a lot more power. I didn't have that kind of power when, when I was in college. He was able to drive the ball and, and really hit the ball the other way and pull the ball. I wasn't really good at pulling the ball. It was something I learned once I got in, into professional baseball to be able to pull the ball with power. And it's more of a technique. And you know, I wasn't a real big guy, so I had to learn a technique to actually be able to hit a ball out of the ballpark. Career batting average at Oklahoma State. I, some 428. It's pretty doggone good. <laughs> That's career. That's some serious <laughs> eye hand coordination and then putting, you know, a lower half with it to keep your eyes stable to be able to keep hitting that ball at that level. Well, the one thing I had going for me is I had a big rear end and that helps it hitting. Stabilizing. Yeah, absolutely. And it helps me sitting in this chair up here, too. It, you know, <laughs> I, can just, I can sit up here for these very long games. I'm okay. You're padded I'm well. Okay. No, Everything's going no fanny okay. fatigue, huh? No, we're looking if we go extra innings, I'll be all right. <laughs>
Jared Mitchell drew the walk. He's about the last guy you want to give a free pass to. A little conference on the mound broken up by the home plate umpire and now Landry stands in. He singled his last time up. His first hit here in Omaha. This is the young man who lost his job early in the season as the starting left fielder. Been a pretty good reserve player for him. Hit on the ground to short. To second for one on the first. No chance to get Landry with that speed. But they do get the force out. And the speedy Mitchell is retired. To keep up with all of the NCAA College World Series stories, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all of the 88 NCAA championships. So Landry aboard with one gone for Helen Ehe. And you better believe defenses feel a sigh of relief when Mitchell's no longer on base. He's at first a single in the gap is a run. But Landry's that kind of speed too. Yes he is. <laughs> so it's pretty even trade. It's a little odd for me that Landry swung at the first pitch after getting a lead off walk and down by four. Especially when you haven't had many at bats here in the College World Series. Might be a little antsy. You know you've got to prove that you deserve to be in there. This side. Landry has to dive back. He has nine steals this season. Of course, you don't look for LSU to be running right now, down by four runs in the fourth. Check the swing on a breaking ball. Second could be two. Nice stab on the second. What a double play. Travis Tucker with the backhand. The little flip to Lloyd. He starts the 4 6 3 double play. Texas defense ends the inning. Very nice. road to Omaha is long, arduous. Destination, a national title. But nothing is set, so don't forget to stop and see the sights, because you never know what you might miss. Omaha, Nebraska. We're entering the fifth inning in a four-run game. 5-1 Texas with a lead over LSU. Down to Kyle Peterson with Paul Maneri. Thank you, Mike. Paul, maybe a little different start today than we thought we'd see. Not a lot of errors coming in. One to start this inning, but I want to go to the mound first. The decision was between Anthony Renato and Ross today. You decided to go with Ross. Is it something right now you think at and maybe think about the decision? You know, I didn't go with Renato, Kyle, for one simple reason. He's only on three days rest. He hadn't pitched on three days rest all year, and I thought it was going to be 98 degrees like it was yesterday. And I saw that heat really melt Coleman yesterday, and I thought Renato might go out there and be on three days rest and give us three or four innings. I didn't think that'd do anybody any good. So, you know, we went with Ross. He didn't make a lot of good pitches. We tried to change things up, and it got it, you know, gave up a couple more, but we had a lot of baseball left to play. So how about offensively against Youngman? What needs to happen at the plate? Well, we, we had a leadoff triple and didn't score a run. We need to take advantage. We had a leadoff hitter on base there, and unfortunately, being behind in this score, you just don't want to run into outs, and we hit into a double play. So a lot of baseball left to go, though. All right, Paul. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. It's a 5-1 Texas lead here in the fifth. It'll be Cameron Rupp, Kevin Keyes, and Connor Rowe to hit against Nolan Kane. Now working his third inning out of the bullpen as the third LSU pitcher. He's done a nice job. He's been very good so far. He's mixed his pitches. He's actually changed speeds, changed locations, and he's actually pounded the strike zone. Just missed with a breaking pitch. We're up two for two tonight. A single and a double. The 
Did he check his swing? Did the home plate umpire no. called his swing. That's Keys on deck. The right fielder. Swing and a miss. Got him. One out in the fifth. Tomorrow night, of course, the College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One will continue if necessary at 7 Eastern. Game three on ESPN between LSU and Texas from Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha. And right now, the score holds. It will be necessary. LSU won the opener last night. Texas with a four run lead here in the fifth. Missed high to Keys, another breaking ball. Keys has been out twice on fly balls, one to center, one to right. That curveball's in there for a strike. Well, Kane's got that rocking chair going now, doesn't he? Well, his delivery is very herky jerky, knees, elbows, shoulders angled, and then he finally lets it all come out and he hides it really well. Chop foul. Well, anytime you get a guy that's herky jerky as a hitter, you're looking out there, you're just trying to find where the release point is, and there's a lot of movement, knees, glove. You know, all you really want to do is time it and find the ball, and, you, and that's the hardest part is he's trying to hide that from you. This one hit foul down the right side. Here's the way it looks if you're a hitter. See the, the, the kick leg knee gets up there where the ball's going to come out. The glove is guarding the shoulder where the ball's going to come out. Then the glove kind of turns away. And then all of a sudden, the arm swing you don't see very much because it's such a high leg kick. Watch the leg kick. It is going to guard the arm swing coming out the back. Then the glove goes up and blocks. And now the ball comes from where the glove was guard guiding the release point. Guarding the release point. One and two breaking pitch line down toward the left field corner. And diving and making the catch is Lander. Boy, they have played some defense. And that's as tough a play as you're going to find diving to your backhand side. Well, we were talking earlier about speed, and anytime you have speed in the outfield, you're going to be able to run down some balls. Kevin Keyes gets this ball. It's up in the zone, hammers it into the corner. This ball's tailing away from Landry, and he's able to make that play into that corner, not knowing exactly where the wall is. He can go over here. He can see the chalk line, but he makes a great play in all effort. Boy, is that a terrific catch by Landry and left. You betcha. He deserves that. Now the difference between that dive and the one that we said that Jared Mitchell shouldn't have dove is Jared Mitchell's ball is going to be a single if he doesn't dive. That ball, no matter what, is going to be a double, so you go for it. Boy, that's just a great play. You know, Oral, as a, as a pitcher, you were so calculating with everything, trying to find every little piece of information you could did you work on anything to have uh, to hide the ball a little bit better or was well you always do you have your delivery for throwing strikes and executing your pitches but what I would do is get a guy like Robin as a teammate or some other teammate that I thought was a very good hitter with a great eye and I would bring them down to my bullpen sessions when I wasn't going well and I would have them watch my bullpen session from each batter's box and tell me what they see. You know, what do you see in my sinker? Are you seeing it too early? Is it is it half depth? Does it look like it has a pattern? What do you see in my curveball? Is there a difference in the trajectory between that and my sinker? And the hitters will tell you. Then you go, okay, okay, I got it. Now I'm going to make an adjustment. Tell you what you see now. And so, okay, now it's better. So you, you use your hitters to help you find your repertoire that is really going to be effective. Ball and two strikes to Connor Rowe. Was there ever a concern that? The guys that were giving you information were going to end up on another ball club and then be able to use it against you. Or? Yeah, not really, though, because they're, it's going to be a completely different time in our in our history. Okay. And what they're seeing, what I'm doing. On 
the corner called strike. LSU with some sensational defense to prevent Texas from adding to the run. And this is where speed is your friend and not being, not being in the lineup a whole lot. This is a great effort right here by Leon Landry. And the fans love it. Welcome back to the College World Series where Texas leads LSU. We check in with Erin. She's with Augie Garrido. Mike, thanks so much. Augie, you've joked a little bit about Taylor Youngman. Wishing you had maybe seen a little bit out of what you've seen tonight from him yesterday. But what have you seen from this guy well, so far? He's been uh, really sharp, and this is the way he usually pitches. I think that I, we put him into a situation that he's not as comfortable in, and, and that had a lot to do with his uh, inconsistency because you really had to go through the bullpen last night with the heat and the extra innings what do you expect how much longer can you go with well, him I, th I think he can make it you know I think he can pitch nine innings he's strong he pitches efficiently we'll just have to see how the game plays out and play it from pitch to pitch all right Augie thank you thank you I think it was really interesting last night you could tell Augie was not happy with Youngman came in walked one batter on four pitches went two and oh on the next hitter and he went out and got him and took him out Youngman was obviously not happy happy to leave but then this morning Augie took complete responsibility for it and said we put him in a situation where he was uncomfortable and that's that's on us. Well, you see his breakdown he has been very efficient all those pitches he can use and he has used them the swinging strikes you can see they're all effective also. This is a young man who's 10 and 3 with a 2.21 overall statistics so he has been on top of it for a freshman all year. Certainly shown no signs of tiring in this game. Pitch count quite low as we play in the fifth. And he faces the number nine man in the order of the freshman shortstop, Austin Nola. And the pro Tiger crowd chanting LSU. Fastball hit toward right, but Keys is there for the first down of the inning. Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Smirnoff Ice on ESPN 2 at 7 Eastern. The Yankees and the Braves. ESPN News will be shown in New York and Atlanta. Then Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell on ESPN at 8 Eastern. The Yankees wrap up their series against the Mets. Both games part of the ALNL showdown presented by State Farm. Look at the numbers on LeMayu. 476 with 10 hits here in Omaha. He has one of those tonight, a triple off the right field wall. And that's the second one in this inning that Youngman has bounced up there. Well, DJ LeMayu was drafted by the Chicago Cubs. Their general manager, Jim Henry, is in the ballpark because of not only some of the players that he's watched and drafted but his relationship with Paul Maneri the LSU skipper and Jim was the head baseball coach at Creighton when he brought them to the college yes, World Series. said LeMay you went around one on one. Looks like he went. I don't know, Robin. You know, pitcher, I say yes. A hitter, they say no. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Strike call at the knees, one and two. That's what we want. A nice heated discussion of <laughs> We'll never agree on that one. I never figure out how they call it anyway. That fastball is high. What is your standard? Everybody seems to have a different way of looking at it. Well, I mean, there's two of them. You can break your wrist, or if the bat goes beyond home plate, those are usually the uh, the telltale signs of a, of a swing. Right back to the mound, Youngman, a little underhand toss up to Brandon Belt. Two gone. Taylor Young. 
Schmidt pitched in relief on a Friday and started on a Sunday during the regular season. He's never relieved the day before. Now, that relief appearance was a very brief warm up, come in, throw six balls, and get out. It wasn't a lot of stress, but it was almost like a glorified side work with a little adrenaline to it. So it'll be interesting to see with Augie thinking that, you know, he's been very efficient. I think maybe he could go nine innings. I think Augie's hoping he can go nine innings because the bullpen took such work. Well, the difference has got to be you're at the College World Series in Omaha. You're on the biggest stage that this game can present, and you throw six pitches and make that nice and glorious walk to the dugout. But I'm looking at a young man that might make $180 million in the big leagues, too. He could end up being a top draft pick his junior sure. year. He could end up having a 15 year career. So I've got to watch him and I've got to make sure I try not to hurt anybody. Balls hit hard but straight away center field and the wind driving it back. And an easy play for Connor Rowe. Three up three down here in the fifth. Texas in command 5 1 over LSU. Now it's time to look at Lowe's honoring the winner of the Lowe's Senior Class Award. This year's winner, University of Florida infielder Brandon MacArthur. He helped lead the Gators to the Super Regionals this year, hit 338, had 441 RBIs, 14 doubles to lead the team. In the classroom, he completed his undergraduate degree in criminology and is now working on his master's degree in anthropology, a four-time SEC academic honor roll selection. Congratulations to Brandon MacArthur. You guys have anthropology degrees, don't you? Isn't that a store? Isn't that a women's clothing store? <laughs> no, but that's good. That's good. Preston Clark will lead it off. And Nolan Kane has now gone two in the third, allowing only one hit, struck out three, and walked a batter. So you couldn't ask for anything more from this senior coming out of the bullpen to hold him close. That pitch was up in the zone and line for a hit by Clark. Well, it's going to be your second time through the lineup, and this ball is going to be up in the zone. You now have an idea what you're seeing from the pitcher, and you know, anytime a ball gets up, it's your second time around. You have a, just a better idea. This is a nice job by Clark to go ahead with that and, and take that into left field. Baseball certainly a game of adjustments after you faced a guy the first time. When you come up the second time, depending on what you did, do you expect the same pattern? Do you expect an opposite pattern of what he showed you the first time? Well, you don't necessarily think the pattern is as much as the curveball. You haven't seen his breaking pitches. Sometimes he has a bigger one. Sometimes he has a tighter one. And when you're going through the first time, it's the first time you've seen him, you get two strikes on you. You don't know. So they're chasing balls that are kind of going out of the zone. Now you have a better idea because not only during you're at bat, but you're watching when other people are at bat. Clark at first, Brandon Loy, the number nine man in the order, looked to sacrifice on that first pitch. The Texas looking to get that fifth run, plus expand this lead. That bunt is foul. Well, the fifth run as far as leading. And what you're trying to do is Texas is or LSU has scored 9, 9, 14, and 7. So Augie's not sitting there thinking, you know, they're done. He's looking for the knockout punch to get to seven or more because that's right where LSU usually ends up no matter how the game goes. If they get them early or they get them late, they, they usually get them. Get them. <laughs> that's right. Well, right now I'm thinking with Taylor Youngman in there, you, you better be worried about getting two. 
he I mean he is pitching a game and, and you know if if Augie Garrido is thinking about him stretching him out you know three more innings you, you still have wood that's in the pen you still have pitchers that are in there but you, you know he, it's not like last night where a guy's just you know cramping up he, he looks pretty strong on the mound. Owen two to Brandon Loy. The damage has come from the Texas 789 hitters tonight. They're hitting 500 with a home run and driven in three of the five. Swing and a miss. Got him. Back to the top of the order for Torres, who has a single, a walk, and a strikeout in three trips to the plate tonight. We are in the Texas sixth inning. The Longhorns on top 5 1. Michael Torres is the table setter. He has some speed but he's he's not one of those flyers you know a third baseman that's a leadoff hitter is not usually a flyer right now, Robin <laughs> not usually <laughs> you don't see many leadoff hitters that are third baseman. well he's moved around a lot he, he's played different positions he's been at second shortstop left field you know so he's not your typical you know third baseman but you know Sean Figgins ain't bad no I like him but he's, you're right he's, he's not your typical. He's third baseman either. Yeah, he's messing with the uh, you know the normal flow of third baseman. He's bringing the uh, the average down. <laughs> Which average? The average the of nothing. Of yes, <laughs> the slow foot average. Torres started his career at Southern California, transferred to Texas. Kane starting to take a little more time. Sometimes is a sign of getting tired. That's a pretty good pitch right there. That's a sharp breaking ball down to a left hand hitter looking for a rollover double play. He's doing a good job being fast to the plate. They learn hook him early. She's a little happier tonight than she was last night. Good outfit. That one's low. Torres has worked the count to three and one with Clark at first base and only one out here in the Texas sixth. It's a good time for Augie to start the runner. You know you're fast at plate. You got a guy three and one count. You got a four run lead. Straight away center field. Mata all the way back to the track as that ball carried. Two out. Tomorrow night, if necessary, the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One will continue with game three in the finals on ESPN between LSU and Texas. We'll be right back here at Rosenblatt. LSU won the opener last night in extra innings. Texas leading this one five to one. If we have game three, hope you can join us. It's been a great series between two legendary programs, and now Daniel Bradshaw is up and warming if necessary as Cole uh, Kane has done a sparkling job in relief. But has not worked that many innings only 30 innings coming into this game all year long. Now Tucker down the right field line and that will drop Mitchell. Over to get it back into the infield first and third with two outs.
Do a nice job, not trying to do too much. That ball's breaking down and in, stayed inside it. Jared Mitchell out there in right field does a good job right here. Doesn't overrun it, doesn't overplay it. He, he eases into this knowing there's a runner on. So he makes the aggressive play and runs over there and tries to make the catch. Maybe give up a run. Just played it into a routine out. Leave it up to your pitcher to get the final out of this inning. Two on, two out for Brandon Belt. And let's see if that's about as far as Kane is going to go. That certainly wasn't a hard hit ball, but the one before was. Well, again, we're going, you know, you're now going around the second time of this lineup. Guys have a better idea. It's not necessarily how hard. Preston Clark hit one hard. Michael Torres hits one hard. Travis Tucker dunks one in in right field. It's not always the hard ones. It's just getting a better idea and getting your bat on it. It's not like any one of his pitches will really put any anxiety in a hitter's mind. It's the whole repertoire of pitches, but once that mystery is revealed, now the hitters get more comfortable. They're like, oh, this is what he goes with. Oh, you know what? I, I really, the change up and the curveball are kind of the same pitch. They're kind of the same speed. And they end up in the same place. And the fastball is not that overpowering. So this is going to be my approach. And that's where, in the second time around the order, the hitters start to catch on. Kane will stay in there as you see he's throwing 44 pitches. And he'll face Brandon Belt, who was singled, walked, and popped out. He's driven in three here in Omaha. Much better job tonight with runners in scoring position three for five. Of course last night. And in ham runners in scoring position, they just hit one solo home run after another. Pretty close if it's not back. It is reminiscent of what they used to do for Gorilla Ball. Breaking pitch misses. It's a big at bat in this game. Emotionally for both sides. Texas to try and give a knockout punch and LSU to avoid a little bit of a disaster and come in with some momentum because they didn't give up any runs. Check the swing on a fastball. No, Three balls and a strike to Brandon Belt. Barrel did not cross home plate. If that is your standard, he checked it. I don't give in right here. I'm down by four runs. I don't just give in for a 3 1 strike, not two belt. I've got two hitters to get one out. That one was up, popped in the shallow left. Nola back on the grass, makes the catch. They get out of a jam. Texas gone in the six, but they still lead it here in Omaha, five to one. Welcome back to Omaha. And that's been the story, Taylor Youngman tonight. She has shut down LSU on three hits as we go to the bottom of the sixth and given the Texas Longhorns a 5-1 lead in this angular young man has done his job. 67 pitches very efficient like Augie said. They went deep into their bullpen yesterday with Austin Wood going two and two thirds. Taylor didn't get an out but threw six pitches. Austin DeSherry went an inning. Brandon Workman won an inning in two thirds so they're trying to go as deep as they can with Taylor Youngman and get to tomorrow. He'll face the three four five men in the LSU order Dean Gibbs and Mato. And Dean takes a called strike. 
struck out tonight hitting 294 here in Omaha with a couple of home runs and driven in five. All Youngman has done in the College World Series is go 11 in the third inning and yield only six hits. This one is chopped off the plate. Tough play. No. And the ball gets loose. Blake Dean's going to end up at second base. That had tough chance written all over it as soon as it left the bat. This is a play that's taught one way and I think it should be taught another way. The pitcher should field this ball. He is the fielder. He, see how Taylor gives up on that ball. He needs to go and get that ball because the second baseman is going to be there when it's that high. And I think Taylor ends up being the one that could possibly get it. The play there also is to get completely out of the way once you're not there because you have to see the second baseman. You've got to get out of the way. You either have to be the fielder or get completely out of the way. And what Tucker sees at second base is the runner coming from one side, the pitcher coming from the other side, and the ball in between. Good luck. Yeah, I, I agree with Oral. You know, as a pitcher, you want the, you want him to be a fielder first, and, and you, you know the second baseman Tucker is going to be covering first base. So if it's an easier play for you to catch it over your shoulder without it even hitting the ground, once it hits the ground, there's going to be some bad spin, and you never know who's going to get it. Micah Gibbs, after they get a break, Let's see if LSU you, can do anything with it. When you have pitchers fielding practice and you teach your pitchers to be fielders, watch right at the crack of the bat. He should break backwards. Instead of breaking, see, he's in between. Like, do I take that pitcher's angle in the 45 and run to the bag, or do I field the ball? So he was indecisive. Buck Showalter, who I worked with as a pitching coach for three and a half years at Texas Rangers, said, pitchers, I want you to go get the ball. We'll get the bag second. They give Blake Dean a base hit. The error is on the second baseman, Travis Tucker, for not being able to field the toss. So LSU with a runner at second, nobody out. Here in the Tigers' sixth inning. Straight away center field. And Connor Rowe getting himself in position makes the catch the runner tags and into third. Well I think they're going to appeal second base and it, there's a pretty good chance that Blake Dean's going to be out. I think he left a little early trying to get a head start because Connor Rowe does a nice job in center field. And he's getting, out. Holy cow what a huge out. Well, Connor Rowe did a nice job in center field of going back and getting momentum going to first base. And that creates the doubt of Blake Dean. You see how far back Connor Rowe gets. And he's going to get a running start when he catches this. He was early. You know, about a, half a step. Yeah, if you're a runner and you don't have a lot of great speed, you, you know, you're trying to get any advantage you can get. And, and that's the one that you try and get is, is you trying to time it perfectly and he just misstepped it. That is a huge error. I mean he's already in scoring position at second base. You're down by four. You don't want to make that out at third. There's just no reason for that. Well they had a leadoff triple where they left that runner stranded and now they've got a man on second and a chance to move him to third with one out and that's two chip away runs and that's a big difference in this ball game. I mean the standard for him has got to be I can make it to third or I can't one or the other it's not in between. Well, I think he's going to try to come to third he just shouldn't have leave shouldn't leave her. Well, yeah I think the ball hit there the dead center that deep. He's got to go for it. Yeah, and this ball, once he starts running in, you know, it creates doubt of how far he's got to come in. If a guy's just standing there, it's easier to tell when that ball's going to hit his glove. So by him moving, it, it, it changes that eye level for him. Fastball, Mata called out on strikes. Taylor Young was sailing along, dominating LSU. That strikeout leaves him with a 5-1 lead through six at the College World Series.
Welcome back to the College World Series. And it's 5-1 Texas trying to force a deciding game three tomorrow night. The state lead to LSU. Our analyst Kyle Peterson is on Twitter giving live updates and insight on all the college baseball storylines throughout this championship. You can search ESPN College World Series on Facebook and become a fan to get behind the scenes access to video trivia, polls, and discussions. And let's go down to Mr. Twitter himself. Here's Kyle Peterson. Thank you, Mike. I've been called much worse before. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I'm not the only one on Twitter, and this has been really interesting doing this throughout the last couple weeks through the college baseball postseason. Today, a little note back from Rick Perry, the governor of the state of Texas. He's been following along. He and Bobby Jindal, the governor from the state of Louisiana, have a little bet on this series, too. A little gentleman's bet, of course, for Rick Perry. If Texas loses this, LSU wins. He owes Bobby Jindal some Texas barbecue, and if Texas pulls it out, then Bobby Jindal owes the governor from Texas a little bit of Louisiana seafood. So, guys, there's actually some people following this. I get a little bit nervous down here. I can't type much, so it takes me a while. It's big thumbs. Russell Moldenhauer, he of all the power here in Omaha, facing Nolan Kane to start the seventh. It's really interesting after last night's game. A few of the guys got IVs. Kyle was icing his thumbs. <laughs> Takes a different skill set these days, doesn't it? Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't have that skill. I, I don't have, I know you, you don't know, 15 year olds, they can push away. Oh, my goodness. They are quick. I'm fine with texting, but I don't like computers. They tend to blow up when I walk in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they don't like me either. Hey, what is going on around here? Do Come your on, Jaws. Jeez. Boy, Kane's been impressive, too. He has, you know, you get that herky-jerky motion that Oral was talking about, and, and for me as a hitter, the changeup would have been the toughest thing to adjust to. I mean, you, you know, you have the curveball and everything, but you know, if a guy has a great changeup, it is tough to hit, especially with a lot of motion like he has. He doesn't quite drop like Kevin Apier during my generation, our generation, but he's got a lot of that herky-jerky. Kevin Apier dropped on his back leg. The back leg bent a little bit more, but there's a lot of knees and elbows and shoulders and glove all going on right here. And that's Kevin Apier pitched in the big leagues for a long time, very successfully. Three and two to Russell Moldenauer. That's fouled out of play. Kane came in in a very difficult situation. He was the third pitcher used very early, and his predecessors had been knocked around. It was his job to try to keep Texas at five runs so the bats could get him back in the game, and he's done exactly that. No runs in three and a third. Struck out four, only allowed three hits. Lost him. Now time for our Coke Zero game track from Omaha and the College World Series. Texas jumped on top early, one in the first, one in the second, three in the third. Youngman has been dominant, four hits over six innings. And the LSU three, four, five hitters have suffered a power failure. Cameron Rupp, the number five hitter in the order. Everybody has bunted this year for Texas. Rupp, big powerful hitter, leading home run hitter on this club, has second sacrifices, seven sacrifices this year. Let's see if they want him to sacrifice or swing away. Well, I think it becomes very important right now to get a runner in scoring position to get that fifth run across the sixth run, which would be five runs. You don't want the grand slam. You don't want one guy at home plate that can tie it up. You want to get a guy in scoring position to be able to knock that run in. 
Rupp is two for three tonight. Check to swing. What a record when leading after six, but they lost it last night. That was that defeat. And now Bradshaw is back up and getting warm. Can only expect so much out of Nolan Kane, and he misses again. The pulmonary's been up on the edge of that bench right there. He thought about coming to get him before this hitter, and he's been in launch position. Nolan Kane has done a great job for them, but might be fatiguing just a little bit. He's, he's making good mistakes right here, he's just not getting it over the plate. Now, Cameron Rupp, does he have the green light on three? And oh, that's just a little bit too high. And Kane has walked the first two of the inning. And here comes Paul Maneri as he has seen Kane give up back to back base on balls to start the seventh inning. He's got Bradshaw in the bullpen. Let's see what he decides to do. And Bradshaw is ready. And he will. We'll have a pitching change. We'll check it out for you when we come back to the College World Series with Texas leading by four. Texas trying to force a decisive game three tomorrow night. They lead LSU four to one. Let's take a look back at our Capital One images. Capital One presents flashback images. 1987. Up three runs in the 10th inning. LSU went to the bullpen to close out the game. But Stafford's Paul Carey provided some late inning drama. Way back there, gone! A Stafford wins! For more great images, tune into the College World Series presented on ESPN and ESPN2 by Capital One. The new pitcher is Daniel Bradshaw, sophomore from West Monroe, Louisiana. Four, four and zero on the year with a 3.23 ERA. This young man is a true student athlete. Works very, very hard in the classroom. He works very, very hard on the pitching mound. That 3.23 ERA is nothing to shake a stick at. He's got a nice two-seam fastball, four-seam fastball also. The main out pitch is his changeup. If LSU can come back and win this ball game somehow, Kane is going to be the hero. He did a terrific job out of the bullpen, but he does leave them with two guys on nobody out for Kevin Keyes. Moldenauer at second, Cameron Rupp at first. Keyes pops it up right back toward us and just shy of the roof. Missed that one, and she's being heartily booed. The umpire got in his way. See, that's what she's telling the other girl. Did you see that? He got in my way. It's unbelievable. You know, she's looking at the umpire like he made a bad call on a strike. Get, oh. Now I get booed. I <laughs> set a very high standard here. Oh, and one to key. Breaking pitch. This one is fouled out of play down the right side. She was like, "That's so routine. I've got to have that." But he was in my way. You got to elbow him. You got to push get him, him out, out of the way. way. Yeah, he's not in play. He's not in play. Push him out of the way. Yeah, absolutely. If you were looking for Sports Center for highlights of everything sport, it's airing on ESPN two as we continue from here in Omaha, 10:02 local time. 11.02 in the east. Right back up the middle, gloved by Nola on to first. Kid slick at shortstop. Well, that's exactly what you're looking for if you're LSU. You're looking, you're looking to get some quick outs, and this ball's hit very hard up the middle. It stays down. He's able to step on second and get it over to first. Just what the doctor ordered if you're LSU. Moldenauer advances to third, but there's two outs for Connor Rowe. 
And he likes that high pitch. That's where his power is. Chased one up around the bill of his cap that time. Well, they must have a pretty good idea on Bradshaw about some off speed pitches because that looks like a ball right there. He was sitting on a breaking ball and got a fastball and couldn't hold up. There's another fastball outside corner at the knees, 0 and 2. Kevin Keyes had a couple sliders with the first pitches from Bradshaw, and he was taking some healthy hacks at him. As you see right here, they're just waiting for, for a hanging breaking ball. Well, there it was, but it's way inside, and that was a spinner, wasn't it? Yeah, there's nothing you can do with that one. Sometimes they're so bad they don't hurt you. Sometimes they're so bad they help you. <laughs> There's another breaking ball hit toward third. Good play by Helen Eady. Actually had to let the ball play him a little bit, but stayed with it and got him. Double play helps get him out of the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh in Omaha. World Series Texas on top of LSU 5 1 we check in with Aaron. Hey Mike well so much has been made about Texas and their dramatic comebacks three straight of them here in Omaha a lot of questions while these guys were warming up and, and chilling out during the rain delay about how they would handle such a tough dramatic loss last night. Well a lot of the guys said you know that rain delay as we mentioned before gave them so much of an opportunity just to kind of break up the routine lay back and if you want to know how relaxed this team has been well they've been dancing here in the dugout doing some pull ups over here and of course you know being up by four runs helps that but they were even relaxed when they left their hotel today. How do I know five of these guys left their jerseys in their room Poor uh, <laughs> staff here for the Longhorns had to go back to their hotel and, and get some of the jerseys for these guys. So really not even thinking about their uniforms to bring to Rosenblatt tonight. All right Aaron thanks. I can they trailed Southern Miss by one in the eighth and won it. Trail ASU six nothing. That was a big comeback. And down three two in the bottom of the ninth, they win it four to three. LSU, its biggest deficit since trailing Vandy four nothing in the SEC tournament. That was the last time they lost in postseason. I can see either one of you guys dancing in the dugout. No, <laughs> no, I, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. Oral did a lot. Oh, here Oral, we go. Oral did a lot of that. Yeah. Robin was Mr. Keep the team loose. Well, Oral has that natural athleticism yeah, and rhythm. Absolutely. You can see him doing a lot of that. Jeez. And he likes not only to do it in the dugout, but I mean, he goes out on town, you know, does a lot of dancing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> remember a Sunday day game when you weren't sure the team was in it about the second third inning after we were really flat you came running in we're from watching third the base. game right now we're, <laughs> we're running in from we third know. base and you slid into the gravel did a pop-up slide into the dugout and said let's go you were, <laughs> you were a little goofy this one hit toward the gap in the left center field but hangs up for Preston Clark and the dangerous Jared Mitchell is gone well, we don't want to leave people hanging with that no, story. What no. happened after uh, the pop-up slide? We pop-up slide right into the men's, men's uh, bench. You know, slid into a sunken bench, popped up, and just started yelling stuff. to everybody. I, it's a blur, I, sort of. Yeah. He's one of yeah. the better teammates no, you can I, have at keeping people loose. He he did things like the Green Hornet. He did everything kind of sly, and then all of a sudden he no, popped I'm, up on I'm you. I'm Robin. Oh, you're Robin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. See? Not the Green Hornet. <laughs> Who was the Green Hornet sidekick? Kato. Kato. So who's Batman, Robin? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm only concerned to myself. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> Landry fouls off the first pitch, getting late for LSU. Especially against this young man. 12 and two thirds innings, seven hits. Two runs, one earned, five walks, 11 Ks here at the College World Series. That's an ERA under .8. Done his job and more. And Landry now in an 0-2 hole, it make it one and two. 
Landry, the defensive play of the game, maybe the College World Series. That's just a brilliant running catch. And it's no fun landing on that track. Just stayed alive. Well, one of the things I, I really like that Augie Garrido's doing is nobody's warming up in the bullpen. Nobody has even got off the bench. You know, he's not letting LSU think there is even a chance that Taylor Youngman's coming out of this game. So you're going to have to figure him out before anybody else. Only 85 pitches so far. This one curling foul. Almost had a double. As Landry goes opposite field against Youngman. His numbers in four appearances. Got to be very envious of what he's put up. If he gets a win here in this game, he'll tie a college World Series record being 3-0. Opponents started the night hitting only 136 against him in the College World Series. And he has improved that dramatically tonight. And he strikes out Landry on a fastball. Helene, he will come up with nobody on and two out. You can stay up with all of the information on the NCAA College World Series by logging on to NCAA.com. It's the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Doesn't look like fatigue has become any kind of a factor for Youngman. His motion identical to what it was. Still able to get up that normal speed on his fastball, 89, 90 miles an hour. Very smooth, and he's been repeating his delivery very well. And all the pitches seem to come out of that same arm angle right out of the top. I tell you, Robin, to me, I don't know, we can't be down there in the batter's box. For me, just looking from here, he looks sneaky quick also. Also, he throws the ball very hard, but he looks almost sneaky. Yeah, he does a little hopscotch when he's when he goes through his windup. He starts on the first base side. He steps a little more towards the third base side, comes through. But when he releases it, he's so close to you because he's so tall that it just jumps on you. Got him to chase a breaking ball and struck him out on a check swing. Two K's in the inning. We've gone through seven. Youngman trying to get Texas back in the finals of the College World Series. It is 5-1 Texas over LSU as we enter the top of the eighth here in Omaha. Eddie Sobchak, the College World Series box office manager, doesn't know what it's like to spend a Father's Day away from Rosenblatt. He has been here on the third Sunday in June. Get this for the last 50 years. We started here 50 years ago in the box office manager. This is my uh, 32nd year of being with my father and working in the ticket office with him. It's really important for me to be here every year with my dad and support him and it's just great bonding and getting back together with him every year. ID please. In the ticket office I run the will call window and the special needs so that's why I take care of that. It means a lot for me to spend Father's Day you know knowing that the third Sunday in June I'll be uh, spending time with my, my father and my grandfather. It's real nice to have them especially when living in Boston and coming back for the series. It's nice to have your son with you on Father's Day. In 2007, Mike Sobchak was in India on a business trip and was frantic before Father's Day. Traveled clear across the world to make it back to Omaha. He claims to have traveled further than anyone else to reach the College World Series that year. Now you want to please your dad. Anything on Father's Day? Anything to get back here? And he's done it for a long, long time. Brad Shaw will work against the eight nine men in the order and then back to the top of the lineup for the Longhorns Preston Clark leads it off breaking pitch shallow left center field what a play by Nola 
He had the toughest angle of everybody. And he made it look easy. He went a long way, didn't he? Oh, that's a long way, especially the way this ballpark's been playing the last couple nights. You get the ball, the outfielders are going to break back, and this ball's hit straight up. And one of the things he's doing is he's sprinting all the way there. He's, he's not trying to just time it. He's sprinting to an area. He calls off the outfielders and catches it right over his shoulder. And that's a tough, that, that, that's just a tough play, but you have to put your glove in an area and see the ball right over your shoulder into your glove. This kid's going to be a pretty good shortstop. That's a great play. He has shown us everything out here so far, hasn't he? He's been outstanding. We've seen him make plays to his left, to his right. Now that pop-up. Might be a little bit of Omar Vizquel. Omar would actually take a routine pop-up if the sun was in his eyes and turn around backwards like that, use the bill of his cap to get the sun out of his eyes on a routine pop-up. Pretty inventive, isn't it? Oh, it was absolutely amazing. I'm like, what's he doing? And then, you know, well, build my cap now blocks the sun. I'm, I'm, I'm away from the sun. So he and he never dropped one. Oh, no, he didn't drop any. <laughs> he was amazing. Still is. It's a great time for the Texas Rangers to bring him over there to school their young shortstop and have Omar there starting once or twice a week to help him out. Bradshaw two and two to the number nine hitters shortstop Brandon Loy took something off of that down to Helene he at third fair ball had to double clutch and he's safe. Check in with Kyle Peterson Kyle the guys kind of starting to wind down here a time at Rosenblatt last year being next year and talking about the things that this stadium seen it was neat to hear the subjects talk about the time that they've spent here father's son I spent a lot of father's day here with my dad too my parents still have the same seats I'm sure my pops here tonight it's one of those things I think about this stadium that people start to realize here as we get to the end I think the, the thing that we need to realize too is with this new stadium TD Ameritrade Field will be based right in downtown and TD Ameritrade's a company that's been here for over 30 years it keeps it here for the next 25 years so I think the bigger thing is that it stays in Omaha so much is known by Rosenblatt obviously that's great but I think even more is known because of what the cities did here in the time that the series has been in town it's great to know that it's not going anywhere for at least another 25 years well Kyle there are a few people who have an attachment to this facility and this event the way you do as a fan coming here as a kid as a player coming back here to be able to pitch with Stanford now as a broadcaster and a resident of Omaha uh, you're about as uh, tight with this event as anybody that's ever been here yeah, it was funny Rob and I were talking down a line the other day just about the changes in the ballpark the old cages that used to be out behind left field he was talking about the times that they used to stand by the down the line when you wait for the next team to finish I mean, it's for college baseball players that have had a chance to play here so many of the things that will form your memories of college happened right here whether you won or lost we never won it I mean we came here twice and lost it and I think Robins Oklahoma State teams were the same way but still I mean you can remember remember Jack Payne who was the announcer here for so many years sure. calling my name the first time when I ran out here man I'll never forget that um, I mean those are the kind of things that will always stick with this place runner goes got a really good jump throw down to second base and they can't hold it he's in there I think one of the other things that, that is created here at Rosenblatt and it's not just the you know you're a player and you and you see it is that ESPN has been such a huge part of creating the dreams and the ideas of wanting to play here on on this field just I mean everything that the cameramen the producer directors you know Scott Matthews Scott Johnson they do a great job of giving you the emotion and the cameramen do a great job that that's what kids dream sure of do. doing they see these these pictures they see these pictures and these visuals and if they ever get a chance to come here it that's the stuff that just sends chills up your spine when you run on the field for the first time is you saw these other players that you looked up to play on the same field well especially when you're playing uh, you know maybe in a 500 seat facility or some places that have you know just a couple of uh, couple of bleachers set up to play the dream is going to be alive to make it here and play in front of 25,000 people in the best minor league ballpark anybody's ever seen. Well it's also the best fans you, you know Omaha oh, yeah. the people do such an amazing job of putting on this event and the emotion inside the stadium this is this is their baby 
and, and they do a great job of inviting all eight teams in here. Three and two to Torres. Tap back toward the mound. Nice play by Bradshaw. Yeah. Takes it himself as Brandon Loy advances to third. And I think some of the things where the NCAA has loosened up the, you know, putting microphones on the managers, the skippers, putting microphones on the umpires, enriches the experience. And I think that the kids that are at home right now, especially in Texas and Louisiana, they're getting to hear Paul Maneri speak in between innings and hear him talk to Augie Garrido pregame and, and go, wow, you know, the parents going, I want my son to play for that guy. And they're not only dreaming about this facility, they're dreaming about universities where they want to go to college, maybe turns their high school career around as far as grades in the classroom and work ethic on the baseball field. This ball is lined toward right. Jared Mitchell is there, makes the catch to end the inning. Well, the umpires and the coaches have been the so NCAA gracious to us over the World years. Series is presented on ESPN by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One. Rosenblatt Stadium next to last year that this facility will serve the College World Series will be downtown after that and Texas leading LSU two to one and tomorrow night the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One will continue if it's necessary at seven Eastern game three finals on ESPN between LSU and Texas right now the game would be necessary. And the last two teams to force game three have won it all. Oregon State no six, Fresno State last year. Obviously, if you win game two to force that game three, the momentum is on your side. Nagi Grito likes to call it mother momentum. And it can get in any dugout at any time. He says if it's in the other dugout, he wants one of his kids to go over and ask her to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Nola will lead it off in the LSU eight. They're running out of outs down by four and Youngman just rolling along. He's yielded only four hits through seven. Still got it up there pretty good isn't he? Yeah, the two seamers been 88 to 89. He's he's clocked a couple at about 95. Those are four seamers up, but really he's been pitching right there at the low 90 mark. Good breaking pitch hit on the ground to Torres. One out. Cut. Now it's time for our Pontiac game changing performance, and it belongs to Taylor Youngman, who has been masterful here in Omaha. Well, the big tall drink of water got a nice smooth delivery a quick hand at the end put some action on that ball see his line at 94 pitches he threw 124 in the big 12 tournament that's the max for the year and still no action in the Texas bullpen as he has one out and nobody on here in the eighth back to the top of the order for LeMayu they're just having a laugher down there. Yeah, he's he's going into you know, his longest outing of the year for Taylor Young was seven to two thirds innings pitch against Kansas State in the Big 12 tournament. So giving the bullpen a night off tonight. It's a third of an inning from tying that. But the pitch counts far more important than the innings, correct? Uh, yes and no, depending on you know where we are in, in the. Uh, how hard the pitches are but yeah I think his pitch count right now is is solid for this length of game. He's behind three and one to LeMayu. DJ has a triple and three trips and this one again through the shortstop Brandon Lloyd. 
Second time he played it a little bit side saddle, Robin. Well, it's the second time this this ground ball has happened. One of the things in college baseball is the way the balls hit. There's a lot of top spin on a ground ball, especially with the aluminum bat. And you'll see it as soon as it gets that last hop right on the dirt. It's a tough one, and the seams are a, are a bit bigger than a major league baseball. It creates a tougher job for the infielder to keep that ball in front of you. It's, it, it's, I believe it's actually tougher to catch a ground ball here than it is in the big leagues, just because of the seams and coming off the aluminum bat. It's an error on the shortstop, Brandon Loy. His dad played on the 83 Texas team that made it here, and LSU. Can they have their first four run comeback all year long? I think back to LSU's offense and how they had a leadoff triple that they left stranded. They got a man on second, tried to move him to third with a fly ball to center, the runner left early. That killed a rally. Those two possible scratch runs would change this situation drastically. Because you get a power hitter up there with a man on after an error, five to three game instead of five to one. Well, I think if it was five to three, you'd have some guys up in the bullpen. Well, Schimpf is their power. 22 home runs fouls this one to plate, and there is finally some scrambling down there for Texas. Remember, their closer Wood had an extended session last night. Austin Wood went two and two thirds innings last night through 42 pitches. Shimp 0 and 2 cues this one toward third. Torres nice play throws him out as the runner gets into second. That's the second out of the inning. An error has allowed LeMayu to second, but two gone for Blake Dean. And we're in the bottom of the eighth with LSU trying to stage a comeback. They're down by four, and this is a game they have to have to force game three tomorrow night. Hey, Nike, let's play, baby. Hey, Nike down in field. Blake Dean with a single and a walk tonight, along with a strikeout. LSU has had so much success against right handed pitchers with a sparkling 325 average. Not tonight. Youngman is not your average right hander. They're 37 and 3 when a right hander starts. That right hander starter is still on the mound. He's got a four run lead and threatening to finish what he started. Well, the other thing, you, you, you're going against the number one pitching staff in the country. You know, you're, you're not throwing some hacks in there. You're throwing some guys that can pitch. And under Augie Garrido, that has always been the priority in Texas for their recruiting is pitchers. This is why. You can find ways to score runs if you've got enough pitching and good enough pitching. Because you're going to win some one nothing, two to one, and three to two that other guys don't win. One and one to Dean. Runner at second, two out. The dominance of Taylor Youngman on the mound, too, is accentuated by the fact that Texas has three errors. I mean, he's pitched around three errors. He could be winning five to three, five to four right now. We'd still be talking about how great he pitched. Exactly. But five to one, pitching around three errors. In the air, on the infield. Belt now into foul territory, makes the catch. The inning is over. We'll go to the ninth. Texas ahead 5-1 over LSU. A 
another 15 minutes it may be necessary if Texas holds on to this lead here are the starters that we expect to see tomorrow night Renato for LSU Cole Green for Texas who do you think would have the advantage in that matchup both have thrown well and uh, Renato back on the beam in his last outing has an outstanding running fastball and breaking ball has shown that the pressure is not really going to affect him and Cole Green Robin got to saw him a few times thinks he's thrown the ball really well also. Yeah he's been very effective in the games that he's been in there. And, you know he's a competitor. I mean you, you see him he might not have the you know 96 that you know some of the other guys have but really a competitor you know competes on every at every batter and throws some tough pitches. Neither team has had to use its closer tonight. They have not really uh, worn out their pen. Texas hasn't used theirs at all. So you would think everybody would be ready to go in case there's some early trouble. And it will would be a true national championship game. The best two out of three. Love this format so much more than the way it used to be with just that single game. It's baseball is not a game of single game playoffs. It's a game of series. Bradshaw pours a fastball in there to Brandon Belt. 3 4 5 for Texas as they try to increase their lead with a couple of insurance runs here in the ninth. Two strikes to Brandon Belt, who was singled and walked tonight. Line to right on one hop to Mitchell for a base hit. Belt has his second hit of the evening. Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Smirnoff Ice on ESPN 2 comes up at 7 Eastern tomorrow night. The Yankees take on the Braves. ESPN News will be shown in New York and Atlanta. Then Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell on ESPN at 8 Eastern. The Yankees will wrap up their series against the Mets. Both games part of the ALNL showdown all presented by State Farm. That's on Sunday night. Moldenauer stands in a runner at first and nobody out here in the Texas ninth they're already up five one. What a performance by Moldenauer here in Omaha six hits four of them home runs. We've seen kids that have come in here with great resumes fail a little yep. bit. We've seen guys with not so good resumes or certain categories of their stats and all of a sudden they blossom like this young man. Well four home runs is impressive enough but add to the fact he didn't have any when he got <laughs> here and now he's tied a World Series record with four. Hits one out here he done it all by himself. There have been some pretty good hitters come through the College World Series that are tied for that uh, four run mark in the record book including J.D. Drew who I remember hit four bombs out here down to first throw to second for the fourth got one back to first and they got molded now on the double play. That's a nice play by the first baseman Ryan Schimpf. Well, this is a great play by Ryan Schimpf. He comes up and he gets the ball on this first hop. You see him go after the ball, the short hop, but, but it's the quick feet that he gets over to shortstop. Nola is, is the key here. See how he gets his feet over there? He gets his feet squared up to second base, gets a good throw. And one of the things in college is you have to go directly through the base. Right. There's no chance for, for Belt to really you know do a slide that you would normally see in the major league so it's it's a bit easier for Nola to turn that than it would be for a major league player. Yeah Austin Nola knows he's not going to get upended or take it into left field on that slide. Yeah you don't have to protect the knees in, in college as much. K 
Cameron Rupp now with the bases empty and two out the lines. That one hard foul into the Texas bullpen. Catcher aboard. As that fastball came up and in from Bradshaw. Ball just kind of ran up and in. We've seen a few that have really hurt. Some broken fingers here at the College World Series. Yeah. Some inside fastball, but he's okay. Looked like it caught him a glancing blow on the forearm. And now Keys. Taps it right back to the mound. Bradshaw throws him out. Tough. Third out of the inning. Can the Tigers come back? We go to the bottom of the ninth. They need four to tie and five to win here at the College World Series. Welcome back to our coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Capital One. It's been a Longhorn evening, 5-1 to one over LSU as we go to the bottom of the ninth. If you joined us late, Texas early with power. And then they turned it over to Taylor Youngman. And the right-hander has gone eight innings, given up four hits, one unearned run. He has struck out seven. And he's at 106 pitches right now, going for his first complete game of the season. And it would give a big-time rest to the Texas bullpen, taking them into game three for a national championship tomorrow night. And Augie Garrido said early in the ball game that he thought Youngman had the stuff to go nine and give him a complete game tonight. He's turned out to be the other oracle of Omaha so far tonight. Well, the young man on the mound has been very efficient, very smooth. We haven't seen his mechanics shift. Augie was exactly right on how good this kid could be tonight. Very fortunate maybe that the heat got cooled down from the storm that came in because it dropped about 15 20 degrees around here and the humidity seemed to go down. And we haven't had a complete game here since Robert Woodard of North Carolina and Stephen Ferris of Clemson did it back in 2006. And Youngman obviously our Capital One player of the game. He's just been outstanding and he will face Gibbs Montuk and Mitchell for LSU here in the ninth. Some dangerous hitters even at the bottom of the lineup Landry would be fourth if they can keep it going. What's going through your mind if you're a pitcher in this position role you got a four run four run lead. Ninth inning. What do you think? Keep the ball down, make him hit it on the ground, and get ahead in the count. He's been using his two seamer right there to left handed hitters, throwing it low and away. He's been elevating and going up the ladder once he gets ahead, and he's been using his breaking ball not only for an out pitch, but to get back into counts. Just keep doing what you're doing and stay in your rhythm. Machuk waiting his turn on deck. This is when it gets fun for a starting pitcher in the ninth inning because you come, become your own closer. And it is an inning unto itself because you can feel the adrenaline now and you can push to the finish line. And you're not concerned about anything else going longer if it happens to be tied up. If you give up any runs in this inning, you're going to be gone anyhow, right? You just empty the tank. You know, if it's fumes, you empty that part. If you still feel like you've got a lot, you use all your bullets. There's no sense of saving an out pitch or setting up a hitter for later. It's just get him out. Cole Green, who is expected to be the starter tomorrow night, up just in case. Fouled back out of play. And two, two to Mont or to uh, 
Micah Gibbs. It's the same sequence that Augie used yesterday. He brought in Taylor Youngman, hoping he'd get him through a quick relief appearance. Taylor came in through six balls. He got him out quick, said, you're starting tomorrow night. And he's got Cole Green up for the same reason tonight, because Austin Wood is not available. 2-2 Two -two hit through in the left field. So Gibbs starts the bottom of the ninth for LSU with a base hit. Well, if you're LSU, you're looking for any sign of life. And especially a guy that's gone to the plate already three times and hasn't really had that many great at bats. He starts it off. You got your captains behind the plate, gets a base hit in the left field. Is exactly what you're looking for in the ninth inning. Youngman has really been able to quiet this LSU crowd most of the night. They're going to be fired up here, and Mikey Montuk fouls one off the right side. One on, nobody out. Pitch count is up to 113. He has gone, remember, 124 this year. Mikey Ma took his mom with the pressure on the parents. Just unbelievable. They would do anything to have their kids be successful here. All in one off the fists and foul. Ma took in an 0 2 hole. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Grounded out twice and struck out. Crowd is a force to really give these kids a lift. Chase the high fastball. He goes up the ladder. We talked about the fastballs down to get ahead or a ground ball, the breaking balls, and then he shows you the heat above 90, sometimes all the way up to 95. Eight strikeouts for Taylor Youngman. LSU came into this game averaging almost 10 runs a game, hitting 340. Taylor Youngman has had a stranglehold on them tonight. Jared Mitchell, one on one out in the dirt. Nice pick by Cameron Ruff. Mitchell with a single, also a walk tonight. Finally had a chance to concentrate on baseball this spring. Was allowed out of spring football practice. Has a national championship ring as a football player. Shooting for another one as a baseball player. Breaking pitch, fouled away, 1-1. One one. You know, LSU, when they came here to the College World Series, almost felt like they were in their home stadium as loud as the fans are. And I think the fans are a little late with their cheering here. They averaged 9,600 at new Alex Box Stadium this year, drew over 400,000. But these fans have been sitting on their hands most of the game and have decided to wake up for the big finish. And I think this emotion would have been better spent the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh innings. Well, they they could have kept it up. They did spend a lot in the rain delay. Rain delay, a lot of energy. Strike on the corner. Well, they brought a lot of fans. Apparently, most of them forgot their shirts. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Bertman. The skipper. A couple of very, very nice people and a legend in college baseball. Fastball just missed. Good eye by Mitchell, two and two. Well, every time I see this kid come to the plate, I go, oh, he's going to be special.
ground outside first just foul. He carries himself in a big league manner not only on the field but he's up here in our booth doing an interview with Kyle Peterson. We were so impressed with the pre conversation we had with him got to say hi the way he handled himself in the interview very the way bright. he handled himself in just reading little comic strips for yeah. us in his contagious laugh. Very very bright great spokesman for LSU baseball and football the entire athletic program two and two check swing can be a tough play for Torres had to gun it across and just got him holy cow Mitchell was flying down the first baseline and here comes Paul Maneri he thought he had an infield single on a check swing so did Les I think Les is getting fired up for some football <laughs> season. Is. Steve Manders down at first. Well, what a huge play this would have been if he had beaten it out. Out or safe? What do you think? I think he's out. I think you got him by the length of a spike. Yeah, that's like a quarter of an inch. It's a great hustle out of the box. That check swing kept him in the box just long enough. If the check swing would have been a little bit more of a swing and not so much of a check, he would have been leaving the box and probably been safe. That's a heck of a play by Torres because he knows who's running and he's got to get that ball and get rid of it in a hurry. Yeah. That was a sensational play. Yeah, it becomes a difficult play because you know that guy's fast going out of the box and you have to air it out. You got to you got to put everything behind it and be quick with it. Boy, well, Nett Mitchell's as fast as it gets. Now Leon Landry, the last chance. And LSU has had a total power failure tonight with runners in scoring position. They are 0 for 7. Just think if Mitchell beats that out. Two runners aboard with only one out. Got a real rally going, but it wasn't. And this could, well, it's called a balk before the pitch. Play it up. So Gibbs will go to third. And I didn't see it in live action what he may have done. What happens is the pitcher box. He delivers the ball. The ball is still live. And the only thing that can happen negative to the offensive team is the runner's thrown out. It's called back. The runner gets to advance. But if the batter would have got a hit on it, it would have counted. The offense could allow it. Youngman just pours it in there. Probably a quick pitch balk where he didn't stop. And so when he delivers the ball, they call balk, but he threw the ball, so the batter's allowed to swing at it. It was called immediately. This one's fouled out of play. You pitchers are so sneaky. <laughs> Any little trick. Trying to upset the hitter's timing. But they're one pitch away from a do or die game tomorrow. Two and two to Landry. Youngman trying for the complete game win. And got it. Taylor Youngman has kept Texas alive. They will play tomorrow night for a national championship. night for that young man right there he was on his game all night he pitched efficiently he pitched downhill he had all four of his pitches working there's only been three times this year that this LSU lineup has been held to one run and that young man did it all by himself the fourth time career high 126 pitches for Youngman 3 and 0 with a point 59 ERA in the College World Series. You just can't do any better than that. Well, he will be handing the baton to Cole Green tomorrow, the Texas starter. 
And Anthony Renato will be going for LSU, and they will be going for all of it. We will see you tomorrow night for a national championship game from Omaha. 5 1 the final tonight. Next on ESPN Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Along with Oral Hershiser, Robin Ventura, Aaron Andrews, Kyle Peterson, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. So long from the College World Series. Thanks for watching. Now here's Sports Center.